you think about losing linemen and a starting quarterback, crazy. A line drive kick to start things off, and it's taken a yard deep by Jordan Cotton. He gets to the sideline and gets hammered out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Nebraska won the toss and deferred their option to the third quarter. So it is Iowa football to begin. And they begin with the sophomore Jake Rudock that continues to impress the coaching staff, particularly Kirk Ferentz, with each successive yeah, start. Yeah, yeah, just great composure, doesn't seem to get rattled, handles things at the line of scrimmage, checks to the different running plays he needs when he sees what to take advantage of with the defense. And they play power football with Mark Weissman as the lone running back and three tight ends to start. And Weissman breaks a tackle at the line and picks up five. You know, should we, we talk about Rudock and, and what he does. You know, playing well on the road is a huge thing for quarterbacks. And young quarterbacks typically struggle. This guy's done very, very well. Look at the road record, 3-1, and one, great with handling the football. QBR is 72, 50's average, 100 is perfect. He's right in the middle doing very well. Weissman again. About a yard shy of a first down. And that lone road loss was a game we called at Ohio State, where well into the second half, not only was Iowa threatening to possibly win the game, but they had a lead. They put a pretty good scare into the Buckeyes at the horseshoe. They did, and their style of offense, this old school power football, control the clock, control the ball, is effective against teams you know, that like to go hurry up. Third down and a foot. And they'll sneak it with Rudock, move the pile, and pick up the first down. And this is classic on schedule. You know, you get to third and short, you pick up the first down, you run the clock. You know, they really control the time of possession. They've done that in a number of ball games, and they want to frustrate the other team. Kirk Ferentz, a three-time Big Ten Coach of the Year. Only Bo Schembechler and Joe Paterno other coaches to be a three-time Big Ten Coach of the Year. Rudock underneath. He loves working the ball to his tight ends. That a gain of only two. Uh, C.J. Fedorowicz makes his first reception, maybe two and a half. So it will be second down long. Well, this is a fullback, tight end focused offense. That's the way they move the football. Weissman runs it. They throw it to a couple of really good tight ends in Fedorowicz and Doozy. And Rudock is at least a mild threat with his feet. He's got five rushing touchdowns this season. What do you call him mild? He thinks he can run. <laughs> By today's standards of quarterbacks in college football that run. <laughs> they stretch it right with a cutback for Weissman. Boy, does he run hard. Angry into plus territory. A gain of 10 more for Mark Weissman, the converted fullback, now the tailback. Uh, this is one of the things that Quinn Kessling and I were talking about down on the field before the ball game. The edge, the tackles for Iowa versus the defensive ends of Nebraska. They will try to attack the edge because of the superior size and strength advantage they have on the edge. Damon Bullock on for the first time as the lone setback as Weissman heads to the sideline. And with two tight ends, they'll run it with Bullock. And this time a negative play. No chance. Vincent Valentine knifed through for a loss of three. Yeah, and, and that's the strength inside for Nebraska. Those tackles who really make good plays. When you see that, he's looking straight ahead. He knows where he wants to go with his move. He sees it, and he gets that edge on that right guard over there, Buffelli. He's like Walsh and gets in there. Well, that's the way to get Iowa off schedule. A negative play creates second down and 13 and a five wide receiver look. Four man rush. Rudock well protected. Over the middle. There's Fedorowicz to the 41 yard line. That's a gain of 10 and it brings up third down and three as Andrew Green brought down Fedorowicz. Right back on schedule. You know, third and short. Again, the offense. Tight end, fullback. Not typically what you see in today's current style of football play. Well, Jake Rudock doesn't get flustered. Probably because of the work he does in the classroom as much as anything else. He is a microbiology pre-med major with a 4-0 GPA. Yeah, he's had a bunch of organic chemistry quizzes the last few weeks and has just cruised by them. Third down and three. 
play action. Rudock bootlegs out. One receiver in the pattern, and he can't find Jacob Hilliard. So now it's fourth down and three at the 41-yard line. And Kirk Ferentz, without hesitation, says play field position and sends the punt group out. So here comes Mike Meyer. I thought he had a chance to run that ball. I thought Rudock considered running for it. Thought he might have picked it up. Check that Connor Cornbrath out to punt. So he will try and pin Nebraska inside their own 10-yard line. 23 of his 51 punts this season have died inside the 20. And he does the job here inside the 15-yard line. Jordan Westerkant with a fair catch. It is senior day. He is a fifth-year senior walk-on. But Ron Kellogg about to make his first ever start when we come back. Nebraska with the ball for the first time early in the first quarter as they force Iowa to punt. The Huskers start at their own 15-yard line, and Bo Pelini, one win shy of winning nine games in each of his first six years with the Huskers. Having said that, in the minds of many, he's on the hot seat and has not gotten much verbal support from the administration as to whether or not he will be beyond this season. That is a subplot to what is going on here today. But Ron Kellogg gets the start at quarterback and a flea flicker on first down is Kellogg. Wide open, Kenny Bell. Out of bounds at the 40-yard line. A trick play on the opening play for the Huskers. Picks up 25. Where Bell is over here, and he's going to run the, the crossing route when everybody gets sucked up for the play action they expect on first down. See him hesitate, wait for it to clear. Nicely done. A little jet sweep to Quincy Inunua. And he is met after a gain of a half yard just across the 40-yard line. So it will be second down and long for the Huskers as Drew Ott stayed home and made the stop. You know, with Kellogg at quarterback, this offense is a little bit different. They become more of a pocket passing team, less of an option-oriented team. Kellogg's two for two, a strike to Anunua for a first down. That's 11 more. You know, that's his strength. I mean, we've talked about him being kind of the relief quarterback. You know, like a relief pitcher comes in with a great fastball. Well, he comes in, and he's throwing. I mean, that's his deal, and he does it well. If you take a look at Armstrong, who's on the sideline, the redshirt freshman is more of the option quarterback. Amir Abdullah caught behind the line and thrown down by James Morris. The 381st tackle in the career of James Morris, who... It's just a terrific story. Grew up 10 miles from Iowa City. His father's the equipment manager. So he grew up a Hawkeye, yeah. and now he becomes a four-year starter at Mike Linebacker on this defense. Uh, a part of a good group of linebackers, as good as any group in college football. Play action for Kellogg. Extends the play. And finds a receiver. are in the red zone with a flag down. They may call this illegal touching on Tariq Allen. Did he go out of bounds and come back well, in bounds to make the reception? There were two receivers there, and it looks like the officials you see might the, be straightening it out. Do you see the official with his hat off? That's the, that's the sign. Illegal touching. Offense, number seven, stepped out of bounds and came back in on his own and caught the pass. This is a loss of down at the previous spot. It'll be third down. Whenever an official tosses his hat on the sideline, look right there. He's out of bounds. They throw the hat down to mark it and to acknowledge that you've got a receiver who went out voluntarily. And there you see the official staring right at it. He's right on top of it. And then the hat comes off. So instead of a first down inside the 20-yard line, close to the 15, it's third down and 12 from back at midfield. No down lineman and a five-man rush for Iowa. Kellogg, well protected, but throws an interception. Picked off by Anthony Hitchens. 
Hutchins. One of those senior linebackers on Mount Rushmore. That linebacker for Iowa gets the interception, a 19-yard return. The first interception of Anthony Hitchens' career. Well, Hitchens does a nice job of kind of disguising what he's doing. He gives the impression that he's going to be a guy who blitzes. He's right in here. He's going to come up a little bit, and then he's going to drop back out. And Kellogg never sees him. I mean, he just kind of didn't account for him and just threw it right to him. Talked about that linebacking group being such a strong part of this team. They're as good as any group out there. Kirksey, Morris, and Hitchens. Weissman on first down. Tripped up after a gain of five to the 39 as we take a look at today's impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. And a closer look at those three linebackers, the heart of that Hawkeye defense. Yeah, you know, Kirksey is the most athletic, really kind of a jack of all trades, can do whatever you want. Morris is the leader of that group. And Hitchens, as you just saw, is the guy who can blitz and play coverage. The three of them collectively, a lot of different skills, and they do a good job as a group. to the 35-yard line. A gain of four. Brings up third down and one. Siante Evans came up to cut the legs out from underneath Mark Weissman. Yeah, you notice how Iowa keeps attacking the edge, going off tackle. That's where they have the biggest advantage. Their offensive tackles against those defensive ends of Nebraska. Rudolph. Has the first down. You know, she was, we, uh, you, you look at that defensive line and you think about a guy like Randy Gregory, number 44, who's an outstanding pass rusher. But the run defense, I mean, he's at a severe disadvantage. He's about 240 pounds, maybe 245, going up against a 300 plus pound tackle and sometimes a tight end as well. That's a tough deal. John Papucha is trying to figure out a way to slow down Mark Weissman. And a good play action game for Iowa as Rudolph drops the throw. Underneath, inside the 30 to the 28 yard line for a gain of five. It's Weissman on the reception, so it'll be second down and five. Yeah, and Iowa makes sure that when they want to throw the football, they know where Gregory is. They don't want any sacks, any negative plays that put them in second and long or third and long. They're on schedule. They like third and three, second and six. They don't have to get out of their rhythm. Play clock down to one. Weissman to the two tight end strong side. Breaks a tackle, close to a first down, a gain of four. It brings up third down and one again, and right in the Hawkeyes' comfort zone. Yeah, he ran right through Josh Banderas, and that's what Weissman does. I mean, he's not trying to be elusive. He looks to run through tackles or run over would-be tackles. Nebraska's defense is fifth in the country in opponent third down conversion percentage at less than 30%, but normally Iowa with average of third down and less than two, a different kind of opponent than Nebraska's used to playing. Those pass rushers are often turned loose on third and five or more. Third and two, third and less than two is a pretty good place to be. There's Weissman. Trying to move the pile for a first down and David Santos held him up. So now a decision for Kirk Ferentz, fourth down. And it looks like a solid yard to go from the 24-yard line. Let's quickly go down to Quinn. Actually, let's keep it right here as it looks like they're going to try and sneak forward again on fourth down and see if they could try to catch Nebraska late substituting. But a timeout might have been called by Bo Pelini from the sideline before the fourth down snap. Well, Kirk Ferentz was on the field, too. He was also coming out. I, went, I wonder if he the ball was snapped. Timeout. timeout. Nebraska. They're first. So with Nebraska trying to scramble defensively, Bo Pelini gets the timeout call. Yeah, and, and he really wanted that because he didn't have the right guys on the field.
ABC College Football, presented by K Jewelers. K Jewelers, every kiss begins with K. Dr. Pepper 10, the manliest low-calorie soda in the history of mankind. And AT&T, rethink possible. Taylor Martinez and then Ron Kellogg both introduced before the game. It is senior day in Lincoln. And this is one of those bucket list venues for a college sports fan to visit at some point, even after the Nebraska timeout. Iowa leaving their offense on the field to go for it on fourth and one. Weissman. Very close to the first down. Where will he be marked down? He might have been stopped just shy. You know, that's a, a power runner who fell forward. And when you fall forward, I think you tend to get the benefit of the doubt from the official when they spot. It does not look as if he got the benefit of the doubt. Malik Collins was the first player there to help on the stop for the Huskers. And if our first and ten line is anywhere near accurate, he's short. And yeah, he is. Awesome. Yeah. That's a stop for the that's Huskers on downs. That's a huge stop on a big back. So the two teams exchange turnovers. An interception for Iowa and a stop on downs for Nebraska. A stop on downs for the Husker defense as ESPN College Football presented by K Jewelers continues. Still scoreless. Bo Pelini, of course, an old defensive coordinator before taking the head coaching job here at Nebraska. And there is pressure real or imagined in this community and from the administration on Bo Pelini to finish this year on a major up note as his team takes over inside their own 24-yard line. A toss to Amir Abdullah. Nowhere to go. Strung out nicely by the Iowa front. If Bo Pelini gets to nine, maybe ten wins, is that something that should be more appreciated than it seems to be here in Lincoln? Well, his supporters would say, look, the guy's won nine games an awful lot of times. He has won divisions uh, in the Big 12, and that he's dealing with a lot of injuries. Kellogg. Intercepted again. Wow. James Morris dives underneath. Two linebackers with interceptions on the first two possessions for Nebraska. Well, we talked about this group being as good as any in the country, and normally that is about their run defense. But we talked about their skills, their pass coverage, their ability to read and anticipate, really good. He's right here. Watch him see, read the quarterback's eyes, and get there. And she, we talked about how Kellogg is kind of a stare-down guy, and that's because of the lack of experience. He has not played an awful lot, but he looks where he's going, and these linebackers are jumping on his first look. Jordan Kanziri right up the middle. Close to an Iowa first down. And it is an Iowa first down without measurement, a game of gain of 10. Yeah, we're talking about Pelini. One of the chief criticisms has been the Nebraska defense and that they haven't played like the black shirts of old. Not on that last play, but certainly they've played better the last couple of weeks. Play action, a rollout for Ruda. Buying some time. They'll tuck it under and run and pick up five. There is Taylor Martinez in the hoodie next to his good friend Kellogg. You think they could have used Taylor Martinez the latter part of the season? Well, you think that might play into how Bo Pelini and all of the injuries that Nebraska has suffered this year, his job performance will be analyzed? You think? And Ziri. Inside the 10, down to the 8-yard line. Well, we talked to Bo Pelini about that. And he said that 
It's somewhat mind-boggling to him that no one talks about their injuries. People who have evaluated it and have appreciation for football seem to understand it. But he said, Lincoln is a unique place. It is a fishbowl environment, and sometimes the vocal minority is what's heard. Well, he heard himself, too, with two things. You know, the tape of him criticizing the fans. No doubt. And then taking shots at Tommy Frazier, who's an icon, a former great player here. And I think he'd like to have both of those back. Play clock down to five. Nebraska still trying to get set defensively. Play clock at one. Rudolph gets the snap off. Throws right. It's caught inside the five-yard line. That'll be good for a first down to Don Shumpert. So it's first and goal for the Huskers at about the four. You know, or she, check that for Iowa, pardon me. Yeah, just to put a kind of period on Bo Pelini. His contract was extended. He's here through 2018. If they fire him, they will owe him $7.65 million less whatever he gets from his new job. So I can think of 7.65 million reasons why he's probably going to be here. Now the Hawkeyes bring Weissman back in inside the five. They run away from the three tight ends and get shut down. A loss. How about Michael Rose? I mean, we talked about running to the edge, and you got to get some help from your linebackers. Watch him anticipate, get out there, and make that play. You're talking about a redshirt freshman who's not the biggest guy, really attacks that edge and makes the play in the backfield. Well, they said they moved Michael Rose inside and moved David Santos outside because they thought Rose, even as a redshirt freshman, was a leader and that he would be vocal and take charge. And they played better defensively since they did. Rudolph under pressure. Pocket collapses and he'll go down. Set at about the nine-yard line. And there's Randy Gregory. Yep, you got to know where he is. And, you know, he is so athletic, you can't cut it. I mean, if you're going to try and cut him, you got to make sure you get him on the ground. They tried to cut him. He just jumped right over it and made the play. Randy Gregory now has nine and a half sacks this season, and nine of the nine and a half have come in Big Ten play. He now has four more sacks than the next highest pass rusher in Big Ten competition. You got to know where he is, and defensively, you have to think about tight ends. Where are the tight ends down here? Third, Third down and goal, two on the play clock, and Rudolph gets it off again. Looking in zone. Catch is made. Rod, you called it. And there's C.J. Fedorowicz. They may have known where he was, but he still got across the goal line with a touchdown catch, his sixth of the year. Well, they're so dangerous. The, the game plan, the thinking has to be you want to double those guys down around the goal line. And Fedorowicz, you can't handle him one-on-one. -on -one. He's 6'7", 265. And look, that's good coverage, but he is so big, and that throw is so on the money, that's a tough deal. You need help down there. That's Corey Cooper, one of the safeties for Nebraska. And you're right, that's a tough assignment for a safety. So two interceptions thrown in the opening quarter by Ron Kellogg. The second results in a touchdown. C.J. Fedorowicz now with at least one catch in 30 straight games. That's number two among all active FBS tight ends. That one good for a touchdown. <laughs> And it's a touchdown off a turnover. Uh, you, you said that's a tough matchup, and really, I mean, it, it is so difficult down there. You got a quarterback that puts the ball in the money. You're six feet tall, and you're trying to handle a guy that is six inches taller and outweighs you by 50 pounds. That, that's a tough deal. It is a rivalry weekend in college football, and college football presented by K Jewelers, part of the rivalry series presented by GoPro. It might be the rivalry in all of college sports. Tomorrow on ABC, the 109th edition of the game. The Buckeyes hoping to keep their national title hopes alive as Braxton Miller takes number three Ohio State into the big house to take on Michigan. Tomorrow at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on ABC. How good is that? You remember those days growing up watching Ohio State, Michigan to kick off the rivalry weekend and usually following up by USC, UCLA. Kenny Bell took one to the house last week. And it was one of the biggest plays of the game. And the comeback by Nebraska as they beat Penn State. And for the first time today, you get a chance to say hello to John Saunders. So well, guys, thanks a lot and a happy Thanksgiving. This studio update brought to you by Taco Bell. SMU facing Houston. This game's over on ESPN2. John O'Corn, 67 yards to Danielle Spencer.
who takes it in for a touchdown, and Houston's up 10-0 after a field goal. Bob, back to you. All right, John, thanks very much. So now, in his first career start, the fifth-year senior walk-on on senior day, Ron Kellogg, back on the field after two interceptions thrown in the first quarter. And they'll go wide to Abdullah. Tripped up. Picked up three and a half. Anthony Hitchens made the stop. But it's C.J. Fedorowicz with the touchdown catch off of the second of the two Kellogg interceptions. That's the only points scored in the opening quarter. We'll come back with the second quarter after these messages and a word from our local ABC stations. A perfect football Friday here in Lincoln. Temperatures creeping over 40 degrees, but clear blue skies and a jam-packed Memorial Stadium. Right now, a little uneasy, as they'd probably like to see that guy more involved. Amir Abdullah, three carries for two yards, as it's back to the offense to start the second quarter for Nebraska, down 7-0. Yeah, probably too much reliance on Kellogg to start the game in his first start. Here's Abdullah looking to get outside. Nothing there. No gain on second down. It will be third down and seven. Well, think about what happens when you go to Kellogg as your quarterback. You move away from your option game, so you limit what Abdullah can do. And they came out and relied on Kellogg to throw it an awful lot. And Abdullah needs to be more involved in the offense. I mean, he is a big-time player. Four-man rush on third and seven. Kellogg, all day, zings one to the sideline and has a first-down hookup to Kenny Bell. So I expect that you will see Abdullah get more involved, whether that is screen game, uh, routes out of the backfield, more try to you know, get him to hand off, toss it to him, but he's got to have more touches. So far, rushing yards, 47 for Iowa, three for Nebraska. Abdullah, 1,400 plus yards rushing this season, his second 1,000 yard season. Lake clock down to five. And they'll run the option. Kellogg with a cutback will dive for about two yards out to the 36-yard line. And you talked about some of the numbers that probably tell a deeper story about how good yeah. Amir Abdullah has been this year. Yeah, I mean, he's really, really something. He's, he's a 5'9", 185, 190, but has great balance and much more power than you think. Look at that bottom line there. 645 yards after contact. That's best in the Big Ten, one of the top in the country. Blitz comes off the edge. Picked up by Abdullah. And that frees up a throw to Kenny Bell, who's heading south instead of north. After all is said and done, no gain on the play. Great blitz pick up by Abdullah, but Kenny Bell, all his momentum was bringing him back to the line of scrimmage when he made the catch. Yeah, you know, Abdullah gave him the time, but because of where that ball was put, Bell had to come back to it. And so now you're in this third and long situation, and Iowa has the chance to think about hiding guys. Last time they faked the blitz, and they got a pick. Again, no down lineman for Iowa, trying to disguise where the pressure might be coming from and who might be coming as the play clock is down under three. Not sure if Kellogg realizes it. And a timeout might have been called by Bo Pelini from the sideline. It was. Yeah, and you saw them saying, hey, hurry up. Nebraska, they're second. So we'll take a quick timeout as well before a big third down play. Bob Wischusen, Rod Gilmore, Quinn Kesnick back in Lincoln, where every time I make a trip here, my wife and kids see this on TV. Yeah. They're like, you've got to get one of those. You are wearing one home. Back on the plane <laughs> this evening, no doubt. As we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary, two interceptions thrown by Ron Kellogg in the first quarter. Only one ends up costing Nebraska a touchdown. Though. Yeah, tough start for him. Great plays by Hitchens and Morris for Iowa to get the pick. And then how about Rudick coming back, finding Fedorowicz for a touchdown. That's the only score we've had in this ballgame. I always say exactly what you said, though. How am I supposed to get the cornhead thing Got to wear it. Got to wear it, you're going to wear it in the airport. Wear it with pride. Nice throw over the middle. And Moonwalk can't scoop it up. 
Well, that was a time where maybe one of the wide receivers needed to help out Ron Kellogg in a rare drop from Quincy Anunua that could have been a third down conversion. Yeah, Anunua tried to come up with it, and you're right. You know, you need some help here. That's a catchable ball. He could not quite pick it up, but you need some of those plays when your quarterback's been struggling. And Kellogg has struggled with the two picks already in this ballgame. Had he come up with that reception, it would have been a terrific catch. Sam Foltz out to punt. Devontae Martin Manley to receive what is a shank. Off the side of Foltz's foot, but it gets the job done as it rolls to about the 28-yard line. It wasn't pretty. It rolled ultimately for 36 yards, so Iowa has the ball back. And a big night of college football awaits tomorrow on EB ABC and ESPN. At 7.45, we'll start on ESPN with college football prime, prime time presented by Hampton Hotels in the SEC. Number 5, Missouri, faces Johnny Manziel and number 21, Texas A&M. And at 8 on ABC, Saturday Night Football presented by Windows, part of the rivalry series presented by GoPro, UCLA, USC. to two for the Hawkeyes. Rudolph scrambles forward and has a five-yard game. I just like his decision-making. Three-step drop there, doesn't see anything he likes, doesn't throw the ball anyway and force it. Instead, tucks it, picks up a few yards and keeps them on schedule. Second and five, second and four. Well, what struck me about what Kirk Ferentz said about Jake Rudock, at the beginning of the year, they didn't know what they had. But he's just so unflappable. No matter what happens, he just plays through it. Yeah, yeah he's really solid, you know. Excellent student. Excellent decision maker. Blown up. Michael Rose, part of a collision. It's the right call as an incomplete pass. There was no opportunity for the receiver to make a move with the ball. As soon as he caught it, it was hit. So no, no control, no possession as Michael Rose is down on one knee. And just think about the timing of this. Kanziri, hands on it, doesn't even get a foot down. And that ball comes out. Good call. So Rose looks okay as he leaves the field. Josh Banderas, a true freshman, replaces the redshirt freshman. Santos is also only a sophomore. Zaire Anderson, who got the start today at Will Linebacker, he's a junior. It's a lot of players coming back for this defense for Nebraska. Damon Bullock to the 43-yard line, a gain of four, brings up third down and six. You know, Shu, uh, <laughs> the right side of that defensive line is, is kind of getting worked. You watch right here. Watch what happens here. Watch how they put Avery Moss 94 on skates. This is what we've been talking about. Those tackles are so much bigger and stronger. Now they drive that defensive end off the ball. That's a tough, tough deal for these defensive ends that go about 260, 265, and they're giving up so much size and weight. Third down and a long five. Four-man rush. Rudolph, well protected, now escapes the pocket and throws it away. Iowa had been four of six on third down before that stop, so the Huskers about to get the ball back. But still a smart decision. You know, a lot of quarterbacks say any possession that ends in a kick is a good one, whether it's a PAT, a field goal, or a punt. It means he didn't turn the ball over. Jordan Westerkamp back for the kick from Cornbrath. A wobbly kick, and it takes a terrific Iowa bounce as Cornbrack let it drop. This will roll all the way down to the one-yard line. Expertly played a 54-yard punt, half of it on the ground. 
And Nebraska will start just outside their own goal line when we come back as the Hawkeyes have the touchdown lead. ABC College Football, presented by K Jewelers. Brought to you by the ultra-intuitive M-Series Smart TV from Vizio. It's beautifully simple. And Tostitos Cantina Chips, real restaurant taste wherever your party's at. Pinnacle Bank Arena, the spectacular brand new home of the men's and women's basketball teams at Nebraska, just opening this season right across the street from Memorial Stadium. Let's go down to Quinn Kesnick. Bob, you'd, you'd love for your punt returners to have a baseball background, specifically in the outfield. Jordan Westerkamp staring up into the sun out, out of the south end of this stadium, just put himself in position where he couldn't see that ball. That's why he didn't make a play on it. He had to get out of the way. Next thing you know, Nebraska's backed up. Speaking of backed up, it doesn't get much better as Ron Kellogg's just trying to squeeze some breathing room out across the one-yard line and a quarterback sneak for maybe a half yard behind an offensive line. But again, we came into today, Rod Gilmore, not sure who'd play. Yeah, yeah, pretty banged up. Right now you wonder, are there issues down there because this line has been trying to deal with that. Didn't practice most of the week, many of them, and now you're in a critical situation. Amir Abdullah with only five rushing yards so far in the game. Play action from the end zone, it's Kellogg. He wants the deep ball. And that will be almost intercepted as B.J. Lowry had terrific coverage on Anunwa. Well, if you're Tim Beck, the offensive coordinator, you, you have to feel like your hands are tied a little bit. You, know, you can't run the option without your option quarterback, Armstrong. And Kellogg, who has normally been good in the fourth quarter throwing the ball, has struggled in this start. And you've got terrible field position. You put all that together, I mean, you don't have many choices down here. Third down and ten from the one. Blitz coming. Abdullah helped pick it up, but that is thrown out of bounds. Again, another chance for an interception for B.J. Lowry, but the momentum of the dive took him out of bounds, and he's shaken up. Well, Still in all, a good stop for yeah. the Hawkeye defense. Yeah, and keep in mind, in this punting situation, normally you like to have 15 yards, you know, to be able to punt. And now with the ball on the one-yard line, your punter has his feet against the back of the end zone lines. He's right back there, so he's only got 11 yards to deal with. Everything is shorter, a little bit riskier. Devontae Martin Manley at the 43-yard line of Nebraska to receive this kick. And it's another wobbly kick. And it bounces again. Takes a sideways hop inside the 40-yard line. It's downed at the 39 after only a 36-yard punt. And let's go back to John Saunders again. John? Bob, this is Sports Center right now, presented by Intel. And according to an NFL official, Steelers coach Mike Tomlin should have been penalized for stepping on the field last night when Jacoby Jones was running that kickback. In addition, the official running along with the play could be downgraded, and Tomlin may end up being fined at Sports Center right now. That was a weird play last night. And Mike Tomlin had a smile on his face after about the seventh time they showed it on the big board. And Baltimore, as Weissman tries to turn the corner and does. A gain of four. It'll be second down and six. As now Iowa, for the third time, starts a drive in Nebraska territory. Yeah, but they really haven't taken advantage of it just with, you know, one possession turning into points. Adorowitz touchdown catch. You know, you and I talked this week about Weissman, you know, uh, watching him on tape. He is so difficult when his shoulders are pointed toward the line of scrimmage. A straight-ahead runner. Not as, not as difficult when he's heading toward the sideline. So they like to run him directly at the defense. Rudock has to call timeout. Again, the play clock was winding down. Timeout. timeout. Iowa. They're first. And so Iowa calls their first timeout. Under nine minutes to go before halftime. The Hawkeyes have dominated field position. A reminder that ESPN is the home of the 100th Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio on New Year's Day. 
Like growing up, it seemed like Nebraska was just about a yearly participant yeah. in the Orange Bowl. Yeah. And now that they're in the Big Ten, I think their fans would like to see them play in a Rose Bowl or two. They have not seen that. After the timeout, second down and six. As Nebraska has spent most of the game on their half of the field defensively in a false start. All start offense, number 68, five yard penalty. Still second down. Well, that gets them a little bit off schedule. And this is what Nebraska needs if they're going to get a stop. This down right here, they have to keep them from getting into a third and medium, third and short situation. First Iowa penalty. Rudolph on a straight drop back. Under pressure and Berry back to midfield. Vincent Valentine. Great penetration up front, a loss of eight. Yeah, two, two things you got. Great pressure by Valentine, but he's just right here. He's got to work his way inside and get there, but this ball's got to come out. I mean, Rudock holds this ball an awful long time, and Valentine just gets that straight bull rush inside to make the play. But that football needs to come out. Third down and 19. I'd say this is off schedule for Iowa. Rudock has room to run. Instead, throws one to the sideline and short hops his intended receiver. That didn't come anywhere near getting to Damon Powell. What a great job by the Nebraska defense. Now twice drives that have started in plus territory for Iowa, not resulting in points. Well, Iowa helped them with the penalty. You know, they had a second and five, second and six, and they got the penalty. And then you have the big play by Valentine, and that changes everything. You get Iowa off schedule, and you can handle their offense. On a fair catch. Well, there's not seeing the ball in the sun, and then there is losing where you are on the field. Yeah. And Jordan Westerkamp with a fair catch at the three-yard line well, lost where he was. I, I think he got so much grief about the last play and not being able to find the ball in the sun. He was determined to do that this time and totally forgot about where he is on the field. And that wasn't even one of the intentional end-over-end end kicks. There's a pretty good chance that one yeah, bounces that right into the end zone. Agreed. And that's a spiraling kick. That almost undoubtedly would have gone in the end zone. So back-to-back -back mistakes made by Jordan Westerkamp, redshirt freshman punt returner, that pins the offense deep for Nebraska. Abdullah. Nothing there again. Today's Aflac trivia question has to do with Amir Abdullah. Okay. Aflac. Who was the last Nebraska Cornhusker to rush for 100 or more yards in nine straight games? As Abdullah comes into today with 10 100-yard games this season. Huh. Try to keep that string alive. I, I got, do I get two guesses? <laughs> sure. Make it multiple choice. I, I would guess Green and or Rogier. A roll out from the end zone. Kellogg throws it away. It'll be third down and nine from the four. We're going to answer our Aflac trivia question and see how close you came. You've already offered your guesses. Well, I was going to go with a third guess, too, but two. I'll go with the two. The last Husker <laughs> to rush for 100 or more yards in nine straight games. Yes. I'm on Green. You can't give a big yes when you throw multiple <laughs> names out. But I said his name first. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you only get the one guess fist pump. I was in the ballpark. <laughs> Kellogg has missed on four straight. Two tight ends on third down and nine from the four. And they'll play conservative. Abdullah gets to the five. Yeah, they, they've got some issues, and field position is, is one of them. But when you combine the inability to run behind a beat-up offensive line and a quarterback that is struggling, you know, early on here, you're limited. 
and they're fortunate to still be in. And there's Cotton. He's limping off now. This offensive line is not getting any healthier during this ball game. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Speaking of limited, we talked about it, and Quint made mention of it right after the kickoff. Jeremiah Searles, Cole Pensick, and Jake Cotton all were iffy for today's game with knee sprains. And this one up into a bit of a breeze. And for the fourth time in the first half, Iowa will start in plus territory as we check in with Quinn. And quite a role reversal from Nebraska quarterback Ron Kellogg the third. First start, you know, usually he's the cheerleader. He's the longtime friend and confidant of Taylor Martinez. Usually he's the upbeat guy on the sideline. Today it's been the opposite. His body language is not exactly fiery. He's very relaxed. Uh, and his teammates have tried to come to his aid to perk him up. Uh, right now, the biggest question I have from field level, what kind of confidence does this offensive coordinator have in his ability to throw the ball? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good point, Quint. I, I, I think they're really struggling. And I think confidence is an issue in the uh, in the, in the uh, coach's booth. Play action for Ruda. Checks down. Kanziri makes a man miss. No one home for Nebraska as Kanziri hammers his way down to about the 12-yard line. A go route took that back-end coverage for Nebraska all the way to the end zone. And when Kanziri got loose, there was no one there to bring him yeah, down. It's a, a check down by Rudolph and simply a missed tackle. And that missed tackle by Andrew Green is what opened the door for a huge, huge play. Well, how many times can you keep doing this to your defense if you're the Husker offense? Possession after possession for Iowa beginning in Nebraska territory. Tight ends are a big issue down here. Good blocking on the edge for Weissman. <laughs> Works his way off a tackle. Works his way off another. He's into the end zone for a Hawkeye touchdown. <laughs> wow. What did you say the game started? A hammer, hammer looking for a nail? Hammer meet nail again and again. Wow. Nothing fancy. Stretch play. Watch him look for somebody to hit. One there. One more there. And then finish it off. <laughs> oh, what a tough guy. It looks like the review booth has buzzed down just to make sure he got across the goal line before his knee touched. Hey, effort alone, I've given him that one. <laughs> A for effort results in six. Using that right shoulder, right elbow pad as a club. He just pounded his way in there. If the play stands, it is Weissman's sixth touchdown rushing this season and 14th of his career. Would be the, good from 12 yards away. How about the balance? I mean, takes a lick, just keeps on ticking. Hard to tell where the football is. It looks like his knees are still kind of hovering over yeah, the turf as the ball that, breaks that the angle, plane. you can't see where the ball is. So you need conclusive evidence to overturn the call. You can't guess where the ball is. You need to see it definitively. And obviously elbow down is as good yeah. as being down, but wrist yeah, or hand. hand down is not yeah, that's, equivalent to being down by contact. It's tough to tell. Yeah, I, I, I don't think you have enough from that angle. You're sort of guessing and projecting where the ball is. I, I would let it stand as it is. Well, worst case scenario for Iowa is the nose of the ball will be about touching the yeah. goal line. After further review, the ball carrier's knee was down, and the ball was short of the goal line. It'll be first down on the half-yard line. Half-yard line. Well, he's coming back on the field. Now, in your expert analysis, as someone who played football at the highest level of college, What's your play call prediction here <laughs> on first and goal from inside the one with look at my back tool in the kit. Yeah. What's in my toolkit? Go do to I have the, a lamin the laminated call sheet here. Do I have a hammer in my toolkit? If I got a hammer, I'm going to pull it out right now. All the tight ends are in the game. And they'll go with Weissman. Touchdown. Good call, Gilmore. Uh, boy, I took a lot of imagination on my part. Well, Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator for the Hawkeyes, told us that Mark Weissman is a bulldozer that's better in the second half than the first half, better in the fourth quarter than the third quarter. He just feeds off of contact 
and gets harder to bring down as the game goes on. Maybe just because he's wearing yeah. out defenses I, as the game goes on. I think that's on. exactly right. You know, he had a little bit of a lull mid-season where he was really beat up and maybe not as, a, as effective, but as he got a little bit more rest, they were able to do some other things, and now he's, he's back. He is back. 14-0 Iowa. This was the run that set up the touchdown as replay rule goes down inside the one. I'd rather be a hammer than a nail any day of the week, especially when it's that guy, Weisman, the hammer. Two turnovers and two punts down inside the five-yard line, creating four possessions that begin in plus territory for Iowa, and they've gotten two touchdowns off of that. It's been a terrible start for Ron Kellogg with those two picks. Tommy Armstrong had started six of the last seven games, but an ankle injury against Penn State keeps him on the sideline to start. Roddy is in uniform. He does not look like he's interested or, or going to be able to go. I mean, he's got the ankle issue. The helmet's up uh, on top of his head. I don't think we're going to see him anytime soon. Maybe they'll reevaluate him at halftime, but Kellogg's going to get every opportunity to right the ship in this first half. Shielding his eyes from the sun and taking a knee is Kenny Bell. Let's go down to Quint. Uh, Bo Pelini told me that Tommy Armstrong is available to play today during warm-ups, but I've seen no physical indications here on the sideline uh, in terms of warming up or staying loose or, or just, you know, keeping himself ready to play that he will play today. I, I will follow up with Coach Pelini at halftime uh, in, in that regard. Well, it is a massive defensive front. Three really good linebackers for Iowa, but their defensive line across the board, 6'5", 275, 6'3", 290, 6'5", 315, 6'4", 265. Yeah, and you have the to other be able to protect yourself to play. Absolutely. You need that. And even if you bring him in, he can't run. You don't, you don't get the option game back. He's got to be able to run to bring the option back for Nebraska. A rollout for Kellogg. He might take off. Scampering to the sideline and gets across the 30. Out to the 31-yard line. Drew Ott eventually tracked him down after a gain of six. You know, something like that could help get him started. I mean, that's a good run. They've had nothing on the ground today. Well, a little bit more than nothing. 13 yards, well below their average. And it'll be third down and one, a gain of three. So when, when you have to scrap the option, and when I say scrap it, look, I'm talking about their speed option, their load option, the read option. I mean, half of their offense is gone right now. They go quickly, and Abdullah's got the first down. The first rushing first down of the game for the Huskers. And, and I the, think the fans here at Memorial Stadium realize it. Yeah, the mock cheer. Yeah, 91,000 folks who are not shopping, they're here. <laughs> it's not Black Friday here, it's Red Friday. Screams the bell. It's a block. And picks up close to seven. Let's see where they mark him out. He'll be out of bounds at the 45-yard line for a gain of six. You know, all week uh, in between you know, your bites of food and prepping for Thanksgiving Day, I mean, we talked about this offense, and that they're a perimeter offense. I mean, the screen game, the option game. I mean, with the option gun, the screen game has got to be a part of it, and you got to find a way to get Abdullah involved where he can be effective. It's hard. A little toss to the outside to Abdullah. And he uses his speed. Tripped up, but it looks as if he's got a first down. Still in all. And that was good pursuit by the free safety Tanner Miller to come up and make the tackle. He, he is such a talented player. I mean, Abdullah can, can get to the edge. He can run. He can, he's got great balance. You know, he's got to be the focal point of the offense if they're going to get back in the game today. But when you watch Nebraska on film, how much of this scheme is built around Taylor Martinez, and how much do they lose when they go from a Martinez to an Armstrong to a Kellogg? Half their offense is gone. Half of it, at least. Play action for Kellogg. Trying to escape pressure. Slips it to the sideline, and there's Jake Long. The tight end bails out the quarterback. And that's some composure shown by Ron Kellogg. 
as the play was falling apart, he's able to dump it off. Well, and you need his confidence to come back, and this is the kind of thing that can help him. I mean, he's run the ball, picked up some yardage, created there, made a play. And you think about Kellogg being a big personality. His team needs to see that big personality out of him. A deep drop for Kellogg. Throws it as he's going down. A broken tackle. And there's a money cross. That's another first down. And more invention from Ron Kellogg. And, and you see what's happening? You see he's starting to come alive. He's pointing first down. His linemen are starting to pat him on the shoulders. I mean, you get the sense that just his energy is starting to come back. And the team is starting to rally with him. And a timeout called by Iowa on defense. Timeout. So timeout Iowa. number two called by Their the second. Hawkeyes with two minutes to go in the first half. They've been dying to release these balloons, but Nebraska's got to find the end zone as they still trail 14 to nothing. Nebraska down by two touchdowns. Bob Wischusen alongside Rod Gilmore. Quinn Kesnick down on the field. But the Huskers with their deepest penetration on offense so far today as they're in the red zone for the first time. But this is where the Iowa defense does their best work. They've only allowed four rushing touchdowns this season. That's the lowest total elimination and fourth best in red zone touchdowns allowed. Only 11 times have teams gotten yeah. in the end zone inside the 20 yard. Well, and the best matchups for Nebraska down here are really with their wide receivers. And their wide receivers against the corners are a much better deal than trying to work against those linebackers because they're really good. Diamond formation with Abdullah to the left of Kellogg. A lot of, lot of room out there. Looks like they're getting single coverage. Play clock at eight. And a false start. I'll start. Offense, number 62. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. So that takes Bo Pelini's team right back out of the red zone. Yeah, it's Cole Pensick. He's playing that left guard spot that Spencer Long uh, played most of uh, his career. Long out for the year with a knee injury. Different formation now altogether. And Abdullah finds a cut land and then bounces it back outside eventually caught from behind and dropped by Carl Davis a loss of a yard it'll be second and 16 let's check in with Quinn Bob we've led with Nebraska's offensive line issues and the shuffle has begun remember Cole Pensick started this game at center he's playing left guard Reeves has now been inserted at right guard uh, and both tackles do remain the same however Three of the projected five starters, all question marks coming into today because of knee injuries. Don't have much time to change the play for Kellogg. Down to two. They get the snap off. Kellogg looking for the end zone. Kenny Bell, the intended receiver, took a dive at the two-yard line, looking for a flag, and nothing comes out. Yeah, there's a no call. I mean, there's a little bit of hand fighting going on with those two, and most officials will allow that. When it's not clear who's initiating it, if you've got two guys out there and they're checking each other with the hands, it's not going to be an issue. And that's what happened down there. And Bell's looking for the call because he fell down, but they were both engaged in it. So red zone defense continues to be a strength for Iowa as they have forced third down and 15. And they bring a blitz. Kellogg beats it over the middle. But Bell gets tripped up. Good job by the true freshman corner, Desmond King, to stay with the most dangerous wide receiver that Nebraska has, Kenny Bell. It will be fourth down, and Nebraska has to settle for a field goal try. Coming up at the halftime report with John Saunders, Lou Holtz, and Mark May. Capital One halftime will feature some highlights of the SMU-Houston game. A big weekend coming in the Big Ten, and a preview, of course, of the Iron Bowl. That's a small game Time out. happening Time out. somewhere. There are Iowa. minor implications yeah. to the college football landscape in that game. 
Yeah, well, that, that game will have a huge impact on what we uh, will ultimately get in the terms of the national championship game and whether also, if you're thinking about the Big Ten, will the Big Ten have a shot at getting two teams into BCS Bowls? I'm going to throw another one at you. A.J. McCarron plays well in the Iron Bowl and the SEC Championship. I think he'll win the Heisman. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a Heisman voter, and like many voters, we have no idea what we're going to do. I mean, this whole situation is kind of up in the air. You don't know what's going to happen with Jameis Winston. You don't know what's going to happen with anyone else. I mean, uh, Andre Williams at Boston College has really come on the scene. A.J. McCarron has gotten a lot of attention lately. Uh, I think these next two weeks are pretty critical in terms of how people are going to vote. I know I haven't decided. Well, I'm a B.C. grad, so I'll be wearing my maroon and gold <laughs> campaign buttons over the next couple of weeks with you. Everybody's campaigning. 33-yard field goal attempt to try and get the Huskers on the board. And Pat Smith does just that. So finally the balloons head skyward as there are some points on the board for Nebraska. Took a while, 31 seconds to go in the first half. They were in danger of having to keep track of those balloons all the way through halftime. ESPN's coverage of the NIT season tip-off concludes tonight. A terrific game from the Garden. Number six, Duke. Number four, Arizona in the championship game in New York City. The championship game also part of ESPN's Journey to the Tourney, presented by Sonic, the season-long spotlight on games that will impact the tournament. And you better believe down the road, this is a huge resume builder for one of these two teams. And with all of the attention that all of the freshmen have gotten in our freshman focus, Rodney Hood, in spite of Jabari Parker, might be the best player the Dukes had so far this season. Yeah, yeah he's having a tremendous start to this season. You know what? I I'd love to see those freshmen hang around like Rodney Hood. You know, get some of those guys in their sophomore, junior years. That'd be, that'd be awesome. How much momentum do you think Nebraska might have offensively just off of that last drive and getting some points? It was great for Kellogg's confidence. That might help them tremendously in the second half. Jordan Cotton. Might break a return all the way to the 40-yard line. That might change Iowa's strategy a bit. They've got oh. 22 seconds and no timeouts, yeah. but maybe enough time to throw one deep with good field position and get a field goal yeah, tie off. Yeah, uh, you know, you can take a shot or two. Uh, the clock will stop if you pick up the first down and you can try and rush up there and see if you got something going. But uh, without the timeout, this is, this is kind of a tough deal. You certainly think if he's brought down anywhere inside the 25 or maybe even inside the 30, that you'd take a knee and go to halftime. But all the way out to the 40-yard line, tempting now for Iowa to throw the football. And they will do that with Rudolph. Shirks off the sack. And he'll run. Try to get out of bounds, and he's tracked down by Gregory. And because he was brought down inbounds without timeouts, that is going to end the first half. Fourteen three. Iowa has the lead. As Nebraska gets the field goal before halftime, but they still trail. Let's go down to Quinn. Coach, what was your reaction to the two early interceptions? Well, what do you think? What kind of question is that? How did uh, Ron respond on that last drive? Uh, he was fine. He'll be all right. He's is, a strong kid. Is Tommy available, Coach? What's that? Is Tommy Armstrong available? Yeah, he's certain, but if we need him, he can go. Thank you. I think it's a pretty fair question to ask if you're Quinn Kesnick about your reaction Man, to the early interceptions. Coach is cranky this time of year, huh? Quinn Kesnick has a way of getting under their skin as we'll head to the studio. Our K Jewelers Halftime Report following these messages and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Welcome to the Capital One Halftime Report. Iowa with the lead, 14 to 3. They trail Nebraska in the standings, but creeping up right now. Both will be headed to the Bulls. A pretty good season for Iowa, and they have the lead. John Saunders along with Mark May and Coach Lou Holtz, two Hall of Famers here replacing Jesse Palmer, a guy whose school lost to Georgia Southern last week. So, <laughs> didn't get the forward pass either. Well, I will consider that an upgrade <laughs> for the week. <laughs> 
takes two of us to replace one. Well, you can look at it that way. I'm sure Jesse looks at it that way. <laughs> Let's take a look at what happened in Nebraska at the end of the half. You saw Bo Pelina was not happy as he went mm -hmm. to the locker room. Some, some interesting words for Quint Kesnick. But also, if you looked at what happened right before halftime, as they marched down the field, they come out of a timeout. Mm -hmm. The clock is not moving. The, the play clock is the only clock that is moving, and still they take a penalty. And that's a problem that's happening on the sidelines, not so much with the players. Poor communication. There was no sense of urgency by the offense. And this team just doesn't have an identity right now. I agree with our analyst, Rodney Gilmore. He said that hand the ball to Amir Abdullah. That's who they are. That's their identity. Don't hand him the ball once or twice. Continue to give him the football. He has over 1,400 yards rushing. At least you can run the ball. I know Taylor Martinez is injured. You were the backup quarterback. But at least establish the run first, then go to your short passing game. Move the football. Give your team an identity so the offense can believe in what they're doing. Maybe they should make the time out longer for them. I don't know. But the biggest difference between Nebraska now when Nebraska was great is two differences. One, defense. They're no longer a dominating defense. The other thing is they always had a great offensive line. Those days seem to be gone, and with it is the mystique of Nebraska football. I never heard you get upset like that when you went to the locker room with this, the <laughs> sideline report. <laughs> Not the whole, so it never happened. Well, having a 14-3 lead, and Nebraska won the toss and deferred to the second half, so they'll at least start the third quarter with the football. And Kenny Bell will watch it go through the back of the end zone as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And nothing on the ground in the first yeah. half for Nebraska to help their first-time starter or quarterback. Well, it just jumps out at you. 25 yards rushing for Nebraska, a team that is well over 200 yards a game. Amir Abdullah, 10 carries, 18 yards or so in the first half. Not, not much there. They're struggling to find a way to help Kellogg at quarterback. The option game is gone. That's not part of their system with Kellogg at quarterback. And so they're looking for other ways to move the ball. The wide receiver matchup is the best thing they have out there. They'll start here with Amir Abdullah. He gets bottled up along the sideline, but still worked his way for about four and a half yards. So it will be second down and five. Well, he's their best player offensively, and you, you have to find a way to keep him involved. And there's just not a lot there right now. But you can't go away from giving him the football. Delayed handoff this time. And room for Abdullah. He picks up eight in a Nebraska first down. And I think that's what they decided at halftime. I mean, they looked at the book, they looked at everything they had, and they said, he's got to be more involved. Whether he's he's getting yards in each carry or not, you got to find a way to have him touch it, throw it to him out of the backfield, do draw plays, and now they're going to be more creative with him in the second half, I believe. Out of the pistol, it's Abdullah again. And he runs hard. Close to six more yards for Amir Abdullah. And let's also remember the last drive right before halftime was the first good drive of the day for Nebraska. So maybe they took a little bit of that momentum in at halftime. I think Kellogg did. I think he certainly felt better about himself after that last drive. Now they'll bring the sophomore Amani Cross in as he's to the right of Kellogg in the shotgun. to give that much of a cushion to Kenny Bell. That's an easy first down as we check in with Quick. No big plays and fatigue. The two main concerns, I will coach Kirk Ferentz told me at halftime, they've done a good job in the big play department so far. You saw fatigue creep up in that last drive of the second quarter. This is a Hawkeye defense. They don't sub very much. I mean, these linebackers, this secondary, they're out there 90% of the time. Let's see how they can hold up in the fourth quarter. Well, it's a first down for Nebraska here. Counter inside to Amani Cross. And he bulldozes for about five more yards. It will be second down and five. Well, Nebraska only had the ball for 13 total minutes yeah. in the first half. A little less than 13 minutes in the first half. Hard to believe that that Iowa defense would be feeling fatigued. Well, you have to keep in mind that they were, there were a lot of three and outs. And in that last series, they were on the field an awful long time. The last two series for them. Well disguised. Jake Long's got another first down. 
and an efficient drive to start off the second half for the Huskers. That's a gain of 10 more. Yeah, you know, you talk about the confidence, Kellogg growing with that, and then getting Amir Abdullah involved. I mean, there's just a little look about him. There's the way he's carrying himself. Much more confident now, much like we saw him at the end of the Northwestern game, at the end of the Penn State game. Amir Abdullah back in, but a play-action fake. They want Abdullah on the wheel right now. Instead, it's a check down underneath to Seaton Carter. And the true freshman tight end has a first down to the 16. That's a 13-yard game. Well, you call that one right, partner. You had Abdullah running the wheel route, and the defense went with him, and that cleared things out underneath, and that allowed Carter to just be wide open in the flat. Looking for just a little bit of daylight. And amongst all that white and gold, picked up three. You know, in the past, you know, they had Rex Burkhead. You know, Rex Burkhead was that inside runner last year and, you know, year before that, and the power guy. And Abdullah was the speed guy, the outside guy. Abdullah has become the inside and the outside guy this year. Well, that's one way to get the option back into your game. Have Amir Abdullah run it with the true freshman. That's trickeration. That's kind of a double option here. Read option here, and then one more option. Abdullah reading the linebacker and deciding to give it up. Second down and two inside the 10-yard line. Again, against the defense. Or check that third and two, pardon me, against the defense that has been terrific in the red zone this season. Big play here on third down. Abdullah, he's got a first down. First and goal, Huskers at the five. Anthony Hitchens came up to make the tackle. Yards after contact. You don't associate that with a smaller back, but this guy came into the season with 645 yards after contact. That tops in the Big Ten. Abdullah again. At the goal line, reaches. He's in for a Husker touchdown. He's a bad man, and they need to get him back involved in the ball game. And they did. yards in the first half. He had 30 yards and a touchdown on that drive alone. Yeah, getting the ball back to your best player and yards after contact. He does bring it, doesn't he? They're back in this game. It's like the Oakland Raiders black hole meets Lincoln. <laughs> Good call. 14-10, <laughs> Iowa has the lead, but Amir Abdullah creating the momentum for the Cornhuskers as he had a five-yard touchdown run to cap an 11-place, 75-yard scoring drive to start the third quarter where he basically doubled his output from the first half on that drive alone. Yeah, he took over that last uh, possession. I think at halftime they decided that what we talked about, he's got to be the guy. He is the best player in their offense. Had to get him involved. Only the fifth time this season that Iowa has allowed a rushing touchdown. Number one in the country in fewest rushing touchdowns allowed. So a tone setter to start the second half for Nebraska. Banziri on the kickoff return. Belted down at about the 17-yard line. So Nebraska's last drive, a great mix. Three for three on the drive was Kellogg and five carries for Abdullah. Yeah, and the real focal point, though, was that uh, Amir Abdullah getting him involved. Kellogg got a lot more confident, certainly with the football, threw it to his guys, not the other guys. But Abdullah was the focal point of that drive, and he finished it off with a touchdown run. And the first time in a long time that the Nebraska defense is on the field, 
with some field position on their side. And Zuri stretched out. Did well to gain two and a half yards. And Michael Rose chased that down from the backside. And again, the matchup on the edge. Iowa comes out in this half trying to continue to exploit what they believe is their advantage with their tackles and tight ends against those defensive ends. Rudolph, he loves throwing the tight ends. That's the first time we've seen Jake Ducey make a catch today. David Santos was there to bring him down after a gain of four, but it brings up third down and three. Yeah, third and three, they're still on schedule. I mean, either or here for Iowa. They're not afraid to run the ball on third and three. And so you have to be careful if you're Nebraska and you think in terms of bringing in your nickel package. They will run against five defensive backs. Iowa is four for eight on third down. And they've got Damon Bullock in the game to the right of Rudolph. Four-man rush. Rudolph well protected. Has all day. Down the sideline. Looking for Martin Manley and drops it in for a big play. A gain of 36. Cavante Martin Manley finally makes an appearance. Yeah, they don't often go for this matchup, but they do here. They get him outside. He's one-on-one. -on -one. And he what just to move to the outside. It's press coverage, and he beats it. And then you see the inside route coming from the outside there on the guy inside of him. You know, you got that number two receiver. You got to get your hands on him. And it helps to have that kind of pass protection. Rudock had all day to let Martin Manley get down the sideline. Now back to the ground and Damon Bullock. And a loss. Michael you know, Rose, another tackle for loss. That's a loss of two. It's not often that Iowa takes shots down the field with their wide receiver. How about Rudock really uh, taking that shot on a third and three, third and four? You see that they have more than doubled up their passes by running the ball off the line. Might be in a throwing situation here, though, on second down at 12. sideline and incomplete and a flag comes out Fedorowicz the intended receiver it sailed way over his head the Nebraska sideline wants an uncatchable ball to be ruled well you know we hear every week about uncatchable that's where Fears. defense number 13 by rule the ball is placed at the spot of the foul automatic first down officials tell us every week uncatchable they assume that every receiver is a phenomenal athlete who can make the incredible catch and that if that ball isn't essentially thrown into the stands it's not uncatchable Bo Pelini just cost his team 15 more yards after the play was can't over, do that unsportsmanlike conduct Nebraska bench area head coach 15 yard penalty first down you, you, you can't do that you got to keep your composure you're in the middle of a of a battle here you're down four and you're going to put him inside the red zone because you don't like an official's call? And it's the official that has nothing to do with the no. call. Obviously, he's just taking his anger out. You can't do that. The official on the far side of the field, swinging his hat right in the official's face. You just can't do that. Lost his team 15 yards. So now Iowa's in the red zone. And here goes Weissman. Inside the 12-yard line, four yards on that carry. Well, and here's the other thing. You can't be the leader of your team and lose control and expect your players to be composed and to not get upset with the officials and everything else. You've got to set that tone. You have to. Third down coming now. Third and about eight. 
I tell you, Michael Rose is starting to make a whole lot of believers out there. Here he is right there. He's just going to read this. He's going to see it completely and make his way in. Comes through untouched, anticipates where Weissman is heading, and shoots that gap. That time the nail took it out on the hammer. You got that. 11 tackles now for Michael Rose. Three tackles for loss. Play clock under 10, third down and eight. Rudock, all kinds of time, looking end zone, through the hands of Cavante Martin Manley. A catchable ball, so Nebraska dodges a bullet. He kind of short-armed it. And watch the very end. Martin Manley has this ball in his sights, and he doesn't extend it. He kind of pulls it in a little soon. Got to have that one right through his hands. Right through his hands. And Nebraska may get out cheap with just three here after the personal foul unsportsmanlike conduct against their head football coach. 31 yards away for the former walk-on Mike Meyer. And he knocks it through. The second leading scorer in Iowa history to only Nate Keating gets three, but it could have been seven. If not for Cavante Martin Manley, having that one go right through his arms. ABC College Football, presented by K Jewelers. Brought to you by Dr. Pepper, always one of a kind. The new windows. And Chevrolet, find new roads. The 333rd straight sellout, the longest consecutive sellout streak in college football by a long shot. Watching their Huskers trail by seven. Bo Pelini called for unsportsmanlike conduct on that last drive. And that certainly got the fans up in arms here, but it only costs Nebraska three. Still a one possession game. Bob Wischusen here with Rod Gilmore and Quinn Kesnick. As Nebraska's about to get the football back, coming off of by far their best drive of the game to start the third quarter, down by seven. And another unreturnable kick for Kenny Bell. College football presented by K Jewelers, part of the rivalry series presented by GoPro, continues tomorrow on ABC, and it is the 109th edition of the game. The Buckeyes' national title hopes continue to fall to Braxton Miller as he leads number three Ohio State into the big house to take on Michigan. Ohio State, Michigan tomorrow at noon Eastern on ABC. Braxton Miller having a great season after missing a couple ball games early on. been a different back so far in the second half than he was in the first. Picks up seven as we check in with John Saunders. Guys in the Sports Center right now presented by Intel, little college basketball. Michigan State shook up their starting lineup. Magic Johnson was watching his alma mater with a, a new starting four with one regular starter and Keith Appling throwing that one down. Guys, back to you. All right, John, thanks very much. Read option did not work. As it might have been the wrong read for Ron Kellogg. So now it's third down and at least four. Let's see where they put the football down. Looks yeah. like it will be third down and four. They'll, they'll let him run that read option as much as he wants. They're not going to let him uh, get rid of the football. But he's been hot lately. Started pretty poorly. But his last two drives, seven of eight, 81 yards, no picks. Actually third down and three as they gave Kellogg forward progress for a yard. Straight drop back. Here comes the blitz off the edge, and he doesn't see it. The ball comes out. Will that be ruled arm coming forward? And yes, it is an incomplete pass. Yeah, Anthony Hitchens came through off the, the left side of the offense, right side defensively. No one picked him up. No one slowed him down. Had a full head of steam. And Kellogg is slow to get up. Not sure if Tommy Armstrong would be able to go. You see, he lined up over the two slot receivers and just came flying in. No one anticipated he'd be coming. They thought he was in coverage, and Hitchens has got a free shot. Now, if for some reason Ron Kellogg were to be shaken up and Tommy Armstrong was deemed unavailable, you'd be looking at Riker Fife, who was a walk-on redshirt freshman, who would be the fourth-string quarterback yeah. 
this season for Nebraska. And now the replay booth may have buzzed down just to take a look. Timeout, Iowa. Uh, Iowa's first. gonna call timeout. Maybe they want the replay booth to have a little bit extra they're, time. They're they had hoping. enough time. They're hoping. They had plenty of time to look at it. So Kirk Ferentz calls a timeout on special teams as Nebraska will be punting when we come back. Ron Kellogg looked okay as he went to the sideline, was having a pretty animated conversation with a few of the Nebraska coaches, but he took a shot a moment ago. Yeah, it's easy for us to say he looks okay. He didn't take, we didn't take that shot. I mean, he felt that. And Armstrong has been out the entire game. He was the starter for six of the last seven games. More of an option-oriented quarterback. Bad ankle. We detailed this at the start. It has been a soap opera this year for Nebraska quarterback. Taylor Martinez in and out of the lineup, out right now. And a fake punt on fourth down and three. Rolling the dice, Bo Pelini in his own end of the field. And the Hawkeyes are not fooled. Yeah, you know, he's going to get a lot of grief for two things today. One is outburst after what he thought was an uncatchable ball with a pass interference call and that fake right there back in your end zone you've had a couple of good series you're in the game it's a one possession game and this is a turnover ace is now a turnover they're just outside the red zone very risky iowa had fallen victim to some fake punts earlier this year but they were not fooled there as Kanziri is in a tailback. And a rollout for Rudolph. Fires towards the end zone. Martin Manley reaches out. He's got a touchdown. One play after the turnover on the fake putt. Flag down. Holding defense in the 44. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. There's not much black and gold in this stadium, but that little section up there, they're having a fun time now. Yeah, well, this is just a double move. It's a stop and go. He runs sort of the out route, and then we'll, we'll stutter down. And he completely loses Siante Evans there. Rudolph saw it right away, and instead of throwing it and giving it air, he threw it on a line right to him because he knew he had him right there. The fake punt, such a feast or famine call. And it turns into a big turnaround in momentum in this game. That's a turnover. I mean, Iowa had the ball almost the entire first half in Nebraska territory. Nebraska finally is playing a field position game that might be back on their side. And what do they do? Give the ball to Iowa in their own end. Yeah, bad call. Didn't like it at all. Bob Wischusen, Rod Gilmore, Quinn Kesnick here at Lincoln. One possession ago, Martin Manley had a touchdown go through his hands, but he made the more difficult of the two catches. And special teams playing a huge factor in this game in the first half and now in the second half. Yeah, Nebraska struggling. Western Camp did not feel that punt. That put them inside their five on the one-yard line, actually. And then he actually caught, caught that one when he shouldn't have. And now a fourth and three in your own territory backed up is essentially a turnover. You don't convert the fake. And instead of being in a one-position ball game, you're down by 14 now. I, I just, I didn't get it. It's not like Iowa had been moving the ball that great on you in the second half. You had a chance to kick, play some more defense in a one-possession game. Now, now you're in trouble. Out of time left for a Nebraska offense that moved the ball to start the third quarter. They'll get another chance now. And this a hooking kick into the corner that just sneaks inside the pylon. Well, this is the High V Heroes game. And it's a great idea. They honor a hero representing each team at halftime. Mark Clemenson, or Mike Clemenson, pardon me, was the Iowa honoree. He was a firefighter that saved a family of six when he saw smoke coming out of their house. And the Nebraska honoree, another volunteer firefighter, 18-year-old Caleb Abinson, who, when he was spending Labor Day at Harlan County Lake, watched a truck driver trying to back his boat into a lake get trapped inside his truck. He dove underwater wow. and saved the man's life. Kellogg, deep down the middle of the field, almost 
intercepted and that flag's come out as Kenny Bell has drawn a penalty. Yeah, Desmond King simply tackled Bell. And Bell got behind him and King, I don't know if he lost his footing, but he just took Pass him down. Defense, number 14, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, that always becomes a play that's far less impactful in college than it is in the NFL when you throw the deep ball and get pass interference. Well, yeah, and, and you kind of learn as a defensive back, if you know a guy is going to get behind you and get a touchdown, take the penalty. Play action for Kellogg again. Steps up in the pocket, and he'll run to midfield before he slides. Anthony Hitchens was in pursuit, but that's a gain of nine for Ron Kellogg. Remember back late in the first half when Kellogg took off on a run, his first run of the day scrambled? I think that was the point where his confidence came back to him, and he's played much better since then. Abdullah up the middle on second and one, and he's got a first down. Abdullah really showed up in this second half. 39 yards in the second half, 4.9 average and a touchdown. They got a little bit more creative in trying to find ways to get him the football. Straight run here and a lane. Abdullah down the sideline, almost broke it. As it is, he's got a 13-yard gain and another first down. And he might be hurt. Tanner Miller brought him down, but Amir Abdullah holding his left ankle. And if you're a Nebraska fan, you have got to be thinking that this is almost ridiculous in yeah. terms of the injuries that your offense has suffered this season, and now your best offensive player well, joins the group. They've had so many knees and so many ankles this year. You wonder, okay, one, is it just one of those weird things, or is it a strength and conditioning issue? And you, you just go back and look at everything you do in your program when you have this many injuries. I mean, their offensive line has been wiped out this season. And that looks like his left ankle got trapped underneath Tanner Miller. Yeah, that was his, his left ankle. He's up now. Boy, and that's a good sign to see him walking. Seems as effortlessly as you could imagine after having your ankle trapped under a tackler. But for a team that went from Taylor Martinez, your senior starting quarterback, through Tommy Armstrong, who got hurt last week. He had an ankle injury against Penn State. Well, now to your third-string quarterback in Ron Kellogg. Seven of eight yeah. offensive linemen hurt enough to miss action. Yeah, and, and Taylor Martinez, you're talking about a four-year starter and 10,000 yards in his career. That's a lot to lose. <laughs> Kellogg off a of play-action fade. Well protected. Extends the play, throws it away. Great downfield coverage on all three Nebraska receivers by the Iowa defensive backs. Yeah, and smart decision. Smart decision to throw that ball away. You know, we, we keep looking at Kellogg and watching him play and, and the like, and I, and I think it's been lost on us that he comes from pretty good stock. You know, his dad was a pretty good basketball player. Not just pretty good. <laughs> Bill Self said that he never saw a sweeter left-handed stroke then Ron Kellogg Jr., who played at Kansas for Larry Brown with mm -hmm. the Danny Manning teams, he left just before the national championship team. Ron Kellogg the third, getting a chance to play on senior day. Throws that one up the sideline. It's a 50-50 ball, and it's a win for Quincy Inunua. Sometimes you just need a receiver to make a play. And Inunua just made a play. Well, Inunua came back for the ball. That's the difference. If he doesn't come back with this ball, it's picked up. But he comes back two, three, four yards to make that catch. Otherwise, it's picked off by King going the other way. And Amir Abdullah back in the game. Kellogg set. The play action fake didn't work. Nowhere up the seam to go with the football as Kirksey came through to bring him down for a loss of six. Yeah, and he had something out there. He had a receiver running free, but he couldn't get the ball off. And that was, again, one of those linebackers, Christian Kirksey, putting the pressure on. And that group of linebackers, they've all made big plays today. 
Morris has a pick. Hitchens has a pick. Kirksey has a sack. And now it's second and 17. Again, it's a jailhouse rush, and the ball pops out. That might be ruled a fumble. It looked as if Kellogg's arm might have been coming forward. The ball fell in no man's land. It's still recovered by Nebraska, but this is a big call. And that's a loss of about 12 or 13 yards if that is called a fumble as opposed to an incomplete pass. And that puts them at a field goal range. That should be an incomplete pass, don't you think? I would think. But, you know, you always give the benefit of the doubt to the quarterback if his arm is coming forward. But they had to rule down there. They didn't believe the arm was coming forward, and so it was considered a fumble. Let's take another look. Well, hard to tell, obviously, from that replay is looking at the receivers downfield. Yeah, and remember, the booth looks at every play. And so they didn't see that arm coming forward either, so they're letting this go. They haven't buzzed down on it, so they're basically saying they agree with the crew on the field that the arm wasn't coming forward at all. Well, if the replay booth was going to buzz down, they've had but, all yeah. the time in the world to do so. Yeah. It's almost at this point as if the officiating crew going over and explaining yeah. to Bo Pelini. Yeah. I mean, if, if you see any forward movement of the arm at all, then you call it an, in, an incomplete pass. And they didn't see any of that on the field, and the replay booth has not buzzed down, so they didn't see any either. They think he just brought the arm up. Please reset the game clock. 132. 132, please. Thank you. You're down at 28 for the 32. That's the right call. That's the right call. Arm comes up. He doesn't make a throwing motion, more like he loses the ball. So now it's third down and a mile, and they need to pick up about 11 yards just to get the field goal ranked. That ball pops out. More pressure on Kellogg, and now Kellogg is hurt. That's the third hit he's taken today where he's looked a little bit shaky afterwards. And Iowa is just lighting him up. I mean, they're bringing the blitz from that right side of the offensive line. Kirksey again. That's the second play in a row. Kirksey's had a big hit on him. And this time, his entire midsection is exposed in his most vulnerable position, throwing the football. And, oh, boy, you could get a yeah. shoulder injury and a heartbeat with a hit like well, that. And the protection never picked up Kirksey. They never sensed he was coming because Kirksey was lined up over the slot receiver and disguised his blitz. Wobbly kick into the end zone. Just before that sequence began, remember, Anunwa made the catch out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Yeah. It was first and 10 for Nebraska at the Iowa 18-yard line. Now it's first and 10 Iowa at their own 20. Again, it's got the force and effect of a turnover. Yeah, absolutely. And again, that pressure. Well, the one positive for Nebraska is that all three Iowa touchdowns have come with the short field. Clock at four. Down to two, and they have to call timeout. Yeah, boys going to get that one off. Timeout, timeout. Iowa. They're first. 30 seconds, 30 seconds in length. You can get close to all the action wherever you are with the new Sports Center app. Blazing fast scores, the hottest news, highlights, analysis, and access to your favorite Sports Center talent 24 7 via Twitter. Starting today, you can download the new Sports Center app by calling Star Star SC from your phone. So Ron Kellogg trying to shake off what has been constant pressure in the second half oh, yeah. from that Iowa front. Yeah, and, and that, that group of Iowa linebackers. And how about Hitchens getting in there? Kirksey on that last drive, two big pressures to push them out of field goal range. And you see how far Kirksey came from that, uh, that field position to make that sack. The patchwork offensive line for Nebraska. Needs to regroup. Here's Weissman for two yards. Jason Ankra, a senior, celebrated before the game here on Senior Day, and Lincoln made the stop. And this looks like another injury. It's going to be Ankra that's down. Wow. 
Well, most of You've the significant injuries for Nebraska have been on the offensive side of the ball, but now you get a senior defensive end, a third-year starter. That seems to be holding his just below the knee or right ankle. Well, but, the, you know, they're young on defense. They play a lot of freshmen, a lot of redshirt freshmen. You have a guy like Ankara, you, you lose him. That's a lot of senior leadership that, that goes to the sideline. Tavon Smith, the intended receiver. It will be third down and eight. Josh That's Mitchell right. there in coverage. Rudock is down. And now Rudock is hurt. And he hasn't moved. I mean, he's been on his back the entire time. He gets rolled into at the end by Valentine. Completely inadvertent. Vincent Valentine with his back to Jake Rudock. So that's just bad luck as now C.J. Bethard, redshirt freshman from Franklin, Tennessee, who this season has attempted 18 passes in total. And mop-up duty for Jake Rudock is warming up. And another look is just... Unfortunate as the middle pressure comes and Valentine inadvertently falls yeah. on his leg. Yeah, it was awfully late. He had relaxed, was following the path of the ball, and Valentine just fell into him. It was not a late hit or anything like that. Valentine went down. You hate to see that for somebody like Rudock, who's had such a tremendous first season as a starter. This team is looking at a bowl game, and this is a significant injury. He won't be able to participate in that. You hope it's not serious. How about this crowd? A lot of applause here yeah. at Memorial Stadium for Jake Rudock. Tell you, talk about game day experiences. Nebraska, knowledgeable fans, compassionate fans, pretty good place. There might be some places that are as good. There's no place better. Yep. So fresh off the bench, C.J. Bethard in on third down and long. And they will not shy away from putting him under the gun. He throws it down the sideline, incomplete. Intended for Martin Manley. So it will be a punt for Iowa in their own end with 19 seconds to go in the third quarter in a two-possession game. But this should give Nebraska pretty good field position. One of the first times today they're forcing Iowa to punt from anywhere where they might have a right to expect to get the ball with a short field. You think Nebraska fans are still scratching their head over that fake punt when they were down by seven? Wester Camp looking up into the sun. Has the ball located this time. Returnable from the 27. Cuts it back but loses his balance. A 50-yard punt by Connor Cornbrath. So Ron Kellogg back in the game. You mentioned the bloodlines. Not sport to sport, though. As it was back in the 80s at Kansas. A two-time All-Big 8 first-team selection. Ron Kellogg, Jr., his senior season. The Jayhawks went 35-4, went to the 1986 Final Four, lost to Duke in the national semifinal. But he was a 1,500-point scorer in his career. A sweet pull-up jumper and a finger roll, too. Amir Abdullah weaves his way for about five yards. We'll come back to Lincoln in a moment as we are set for the fourth quarter. And thanks to our crew as well for doing a great job spending the Thanksgiving weekend away from their homes. They're all ready for the fourth quarter as well. 
we'll come back with that following a word from our local ABC stations. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Set for the start of the fourth quarter with our on-field camera guys as well here in Lincoln. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours, and thanks to our entire crew that have spent a season with us on ESPN College Football and spending this Thanksgiving holiday away from their families. A nice uh, Thanksgiving dinner last night with the crew. We start the fourth quarter with Nebraska trying to come from two touchdowns down, second down and five. Amir Abdullah. Uses the stiff arm, and it looks as if he has a first down. But let's go down to Quint on the Iowa bench. Quint? The yeah, Iowa doctors uh, examining the right knee of Jake Rudock behind this uh, human shield right here. They then put a knee brace on his right knee, and I expect him to stand up and do some warm-up or some practice throws here in a moment. Looks like he's just now getting up to maybe test it out as Nebraska just shy of the 40-yard line with a fresh set of downs. Read option, Abdullah. Another tough run, but picks up close to nine yards. Kirksey and Miller combine on the tackle for the Hawkeyes. Abdullah's skill set is, is impressive. You know, quick feet, great balance, change of direction. He's the kind of guy that can put that foot in the ground and go the other way. Doesn't have to round his cut. Just one plant and go. Rudock trying to work through the left knee injury. Second down and one for Nebraska. Right up the middle. That's another first down for the Huskers. Spinning his way as Amani Cross across the 50 to the Iowa 49 for a gain of three. Still the matchup that works for Nebraska is on the edges, the wide receivers. But you got to protect the quarterback, and they've had trouble doing that. Quick hitter, right up the seam, nine more yards. Ethan Carter, the tight end, off the play action fake, found a little bit of room. You notice they've gone to the, the quick pace and also quick passes. Three-step, get rid of it because can't protect the quarterback with the five-step drop. Up tempo on second down and short with Abdullah back in. Play action for Kellogg. Swings it to Abdullah, who's open. Dangerous in the open field. Gets a block down the sideline and steps out of bounds inside the 25. They even on a bad ankle. Abdullah makes the guy miss. We talked about this. Get him in space. Give him the ball. Throw it to him. Just don't hand it off to him. And with the bad ankle, forces a missed tackle by Kirksey. And a good look off as well by Kellogg. A good decision on the check down to Abdullah. Gain of 19. Kellogg under pressure. And does well to dive forward and pick up maybe a yard. Tripped up by Anthony Hitchens. Well, this is the area of the field where Iowa brought the pressure last time. And they brought it that play. So you might see more and more of it now. They'll bring Kirksey. They'll bring Morris. Can Nebraska protect Kellogg? A rollout, throw to the sideline. Going low, looking for the football's Tariq Allen, but it's incomplete. And now it's third down and 10. And if you think they've brought pressure before, get a load of them now. And now Tariq Allen is hurt. You kidding me? Sophomore from Weston, Massachusetts, who while he was in Massachusetts, played high school football for Rich Fisher, who's now the wide receivers coach here at Nebraska. So there's the connection that brings Tariq Allen to Lincoln. He tore his ACL yep. as a freshman. Yep. And now as a sophomore in more of a minor role for this offense. Well, he was just starting to come back, starting to get back around from that ACL. Was just starting to climb his way back up the depth chart. You know, they've had injuries everywhere. We haven't talked about the wide receivers being banged up. They've been kind of toughing it out. Bell and Nunwa. They're missing Jamal Turner. They've had injuries everywhere on this offense. Well, Tim Beck, the offensive coordinator, told us that Kenny Bell and Quincy Nunwa have emerged as leaders this year 
When you lose a player like Spencer Long, the right guard, who they lost out for the season before the year started. You look guys like Taylor Martinez, you need someone to step up and rally the troops, and that's fallen to Bell and Anunwa, and they've done a great job of that, according to Tim Beck. Well, and they're both lined up to the left side, and again, the matchups we talked about that work for Nebraska, if you can protect the quarterback, are those two guys on the outside. They get the playoff on third and ten. High in the air, Kenny Bell pulls it down, three yards shy of the first down. So now it's fourth down and three at the 15-yard line. I'm not sure how much good a field goal does you here down two possessions with yeah. 12 minutes to go, and it yeah. doesn't look like Bo Pelini is hesitating. He's well, leaving the offense out there. Yeah, I mean, he's already rolled the dice earlier. You, you, you're clear playing for possessions now. If you feel good about your defense, you can kick it and say, well, we'll get two more possessions and have a shot at it. Well, they'll have to hustle to get lined up, down to 10 on the play clock, and they're still trying to get into the right I don't think they formation. like the play. I don't think they like their play. It's taking them too long. Fourth down and three. They do get the snap off. A rollout. Open. Making the catch. Turning up field. At the Paul Wamanuwa. Is he in? Touchdown. What a play by Quincy Anuma. Uh, how about the throw and catch and finish? And Kellogg puts this ball right where it needs to be. Gives his guy a chance to run with it after the catch. And Unumwa dives into the end zone. I mean, that's great stuff all the way around. Accurate throw gave him a chance to do something with it. And Unumwa finishing it off. From fourth and three to their second red zone touchdown of the day. And Nebraska is back within a score and a lot of time on the clock. Yeah, just a pick play to free up Anunwa, get him out there against the man coverage, and they get it. And guess what? You got a one possession game now. Nebraska back in it. This telecast is available in high definition. Brought to you by Vizio. Welcome back to Lincoln. Bob Wischusen here with Rod Gilmore. Quinn Kesnick down on the field. ESPN College Football presented by K Jewelers during a holiday weekend. And with 11 and a half minutes to go, Quincy Anunwa with his 10th touchdown reception of the season has made it a one possession game. And we'll see if Jake Rudock can get back in the game for Iowa. Doesn't have his helmet and walking with a limp. So it looks like he's already giving some words of encouragement to C.J. Beathard, the backup quarterback, who will almost undoubtedly be out there when Iowa begins this possession trying to protect a touchdown lead. Bobbling it inside the end zone and taking a knee for a touchback is Jordan Cotton. Let's go back to John Saunders. And a look at our at and All-America Player of the Week nominee. How about John O'Korn? of Houston, 220 yards passing, two touchdowns, just one interception against SMU. Don't forget, you can log on and ESPN's AllAmerica.com to vote for the AT&T All-America Player of the Year. All right, John Rudock on the sideline, Beathard in a quarterback for Iowa. Nebraska has had three fourth quarter comebacks in November alone. Can they pull off another? As their defense now is charged with trying to stop the backup quarterback. And the crowd is loud. The quarterback might have trouble hearing. Westman out to about the 29-yard line. Let's go down to Quinn. Jake Rudock came out of the locker room and is now sitting on the bike trying to keep his right knee loose. It doesn't look good. He went up to C.J. Beathard and gave him a hug. Beathard, grandson of uh, former NFL executive Bobby Beathard, saw significant time in relief against Wisconsin. Didn't play well. 4-15 with one interception. He does have superior arm strength to Rudock, according to one Iowa source. Well, Quint, that was in a lopsided Wisconsin victory. As Weissman picks up about two, maybe three more, it will be third down and three. These are far different circumstances he's coming into today on the road in the fourth quarter trying to protect the lead. Yeah, it's a tough deal, tough situation. He's got to deal with the crowd noise. 
trying to get audibles and, and make the call to his offensive linemen, and you get the sense that Iowa wants to rely on their offensive line and Weissman and take a little pressure off of Bethel. Look at this defensive lineup for Nebraska. They've got 10 players within six yards of the line of scrimmage. Third down and three. Play action for Bethel. Swings it right and complete. Well, he knew it. As soon as he released the ball, he slapped his helmet, slapped his thigh. He knew he had it there and just didn't pull the string. Didn't let it go. A little nervous, a little tight. Immediate reaction. He knew he missed it. Had it out there. Wester camp back at about his own 29-yard line for a wobbly kick. Line drive returnable from the 36. Good field position for the Huskers at their own 40. As we said, already in November, Nebraska has come from behind in the fourth quarter three times. They did it last week against Penn State, trying again today. ABC College Football, presented by K Jewelers. K Jewelers, the number one jewelry store in America. Every kiss begins with K. The Quicksilver card from Capital One. Earn 1.5% cash back on every purchase. And Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. At the Gateway Mall here in Lincoln. 4.30 this morning. If you're a Huskers fan, you got to get your Black Friday shopping in really fast because it's 11 a.m. local kick. And That's they crazy. were here. That's just crazy. En masse. Yeah. You're not buying it? No. You're not buying the clock? I'm not buying anything at 4 o'clock <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> Well, that student section, the Boneyard over there, they started to sit down at about 8 a.m. for the kick. Amir Abdullah on first down. Lost the football in his helmet. What a hit and a takeaway for Iowa. It was a combination of Christian Kirksey and Anthony Hitchens that hit Abdullah, knocked the helmet off, and jarred the ball free. And one play well, and an injury to Abdullah, and it's an Iowa takeaway. Yeah, Hitchens got him low. Kirksey came over. I don't think Kirksey was trying to really make the hit as much as Abdullah fell into it. And it was unexpected. If you just watch the end of the play, Hitchens is 31. He gets him down low. Kirksey comes over. Kirksey gets more, he more absorbs what he gets from Abdullah than making the hit. And the ball pops out. Unexpected. He doesn't expect that contact there. Not a big hit by Kirksey, but he does get that right hand in there on the ball. Kind of knocks it out. And Abdullah hit in the back of the head as well. Has not moved. So the crowd here worried not only about the turnover, but also about the health of their star running back. While we were away, Amir Abdullah able to walk off the field, but not moving that right arm or elbow at all. So it may have been a combination of a hit to the head, but also a right arm injury. Yeah, you, you see just the end of that, that right arm, elbow, and shoulder area he was holding. So after the takeaway, in a one possession game, the backup quarterback, C.J. Beathard, still in for Iowa, but again starting for the sixth time today in Nebraska territory. A hand off to Kanziri, gets to the edge. No one home for Nebraska. Out of bounds inside the one. They'll actually say he is out at the two yard line, first and goal Iowa. Hey, Shu, we've talked about the matchup on the edge. Watch how they control the edge against the defensive end. This time it's Avery Moss up. They control the edge. When you control the edge, you can get outside. That's just a great job over there by Scherf, the left tackle. He's owned that spot all day. When they've had success running outside, and you see that Moss is down now, but Scherf had him on the edge, and that opened up the corner. Another Nebraska injury as Avery Moss is hurt, and it's first and goal Iowa at the two. A chance to take another turnover and turn it into points. 
Here's a look at Brandon Scherf, who Quinn Kesnick is an amazing story in and of himself. Uh, he's one of the most talented junior linemen in the country. Mel Kuyper right now has him number 24 on, on the big board. It's a guy who played a multi multitude of sports, track, he was a shot put state champ, tennis, uh, basketball. He, he was a, a, like a power forward who loved to run the court, and, and you saw that on that last play. You know, he mauls guys inside, uh, but the ability to get out in space and lead the convoy. Scherf, uh, he'll have a tough decision to make at the end of the season. Yeah, no, no doubt, Quinn. He mauled Moss on that play and then was leading down the field. I mean, you're talking about a 315-pound guy sprinting down the field to try and get another block. Mark Weissman, the eye back on first and goal at the two. And a smart play here by the backup quarterback, C.J. Bethard. Why not take the clock down as deep as you can? Inside of 10 on the play clock. Weissman turns the corner. Touchdown. Flags down. It looks as if after the play. This might be an altercation after the touchdown was scored. The result of the play is a touchdown. After the play was over, personal foul. Defense, number 44. Personal foul. Offense, number 80. Penalties offset. Try for point. So Gregory and Craig Kobo got hooked up down there after the touchdown. There is the fumble by Abdullah that set up the, the turnover and the big play when Weissman getting the touchdown here. The good block by his fullback, Adam Cox, got him to the edge. And Kirk Ferentz is going wild. And he has to be restrained by his assistants. As it appears, he believes maybe the flag should have only been thrown on Nebraska. I didn't see the altercation looking more at the touchdown, but obviously Kirk Ferentz did. And he obviously is upset. It seems as if, based on the offsetting penalties call, that... But the touchdown stands. And it's a 14-point lead again for the Hawkeyes. Two touchdown runs in the game for Mark Weissman. And a chance for us to take a look at today's good hands play brought to you by Allstate. There was a drop in the end zone at one point by Cavante Martin Manley, but the following possession, he made a heck of a catch. Yeah, it was a huge catch. It was also right after what essentially was a turnover, a fake punt that did not work for Nebraska, and it changed the complexion of the game with a great catch in the end zone. Well, it's hard to imagine you can give a team six possessions that start on your half of the 50 and not give up 31 points. It's a tough deal. And particularly when some of it is self-inflicted, you know, with a, a fake pump that doesn't work when you're down by a possession. Look at this. Their touchdown drives today. Look where they started. Look at that first column in their territory. Four times. Three off turnovers. And obviously the fake punt as well. That's a turnover. In had, my a lot, yep, had a lot to do with the touchdown pass caught by Martin Manley. A lot of time left, though. Nebraska has all of their timeouts and plenty of time for at least two, maybe even three possessions as the ball blows off the tee. Well, they'll have time, but the critical thing for Nebraska is protecting Kellogg. They've had issues. They've not handled the blitz, you know, from the linebackers. And, and that blitz has been a particular one. It's been a combo blitz with Kirksey and Morris, and they haven't been able to pick it up. With a patchwork offensive line, your third-string quarterback making his first-ever start today. Now it looks like you'll be without Amir Abdullah. And how many body blows can a team yeah. take from an injury standpoint and expect to still be putting the team on the field that they ever thought they would have this year? Yeah. Tough deal. Finally, a returnable kick into the win for Kenny Bell. Tripped up at the 23-yard line. Let's go back to John Saunders. Thanks, Bob. And the conference update brought to you by Dr. Pepper 10. LSU take on Arkansas. 
Why do we hear the sound of car engines in the background as Terrence McGee takes off and goes to the end zone for a touchdown, but Arkansas has come back to tie this one at seven apiece. All right, John, thanks very much, and how about this? Talk about a gamer. Amir Abdullah is back in the game after leaving with two separate injuries, returning almost immediately as back on the field, the star tailback fighting through it, and boy, do they need his effort in the fourth quarter. Kellogg, eyes downfield, looking for a new one. Incomplete. Good coverage by the free safety, Tanner Miller. Well, they had protection that time. And that's, that's critical right now. Abdullah is out there. He's always at safety valve in case you can't get the ball down the field. And I think it's worth, worth them keeping that in mind and getting him the ball if, they've get, if they can't get it deep down the field. Tipped ball in a dangerous area of the field through the hands of Anunwa. It'll be third down and ten. Uh, they really need to pick this up. You can just, if you don't pick it up here, you turn that ball over to Iowa, and they're going to burn two, three minutes off the clock, and, and your number of possessions you know, just really become limited, too limited. And you're probably too deep in your own end to think about going for it with nine minutes still yep. on the clock. So Third down and ten. Iowa rushes four. Kellogg down the sideline looking for a Nunwa. Through his hands. Oh, that's the play. That Nebraska needed a Nunwa to make to keep the drive alive, and now it's fourth down. Wow. You get the right call against the right defense, and you get great protection, and you get the perfect throw. You got to finish it. It's almost as if that pass just caught a Nunwa in between steps, and he couldn't quite elevate to get his hands up to make the catch. And boy, his reaction was one where he seemed to know he missed it. Yeah. You, you got to have plays like that. If you're going to get back in this game, you, you got to have the great play, the big catch. Fultz, a wobbly spiral, and Iowa will let it bounce. And boy, does that take an unlucky hop for Nebraska. At the 32-yard line, it just dies right there. That easily could have, on this field turf, taken a hop forward and rolled inside the 10-yard line. As it is a 45-yard punt with no deep man back to return for Iowa. And a big night of college football awaits tomorrow on ESPN and ABC. At 7.45 on ESPN, college football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. Johnny Manziel and Texas A&M travel to number five Missouri. And then 8 p.m. on ABC, Saturday Night Football presented by Windows, part of the rivalry series presented by GoPro, a battle for the victory bell. The 83rd meeting between UCLA and USC. And you can see how important that game is yeah. to Missouri. Yeah, Missouri wins it. They're your SEC East champ. They get a crack. Possibly at Alabama, depending on what happens in the Iron Bowl tomorrow as Kanziri goes up the middle for a yard. And don't think Texas A&M won't be motivated. And don't think, or I should say, don't count Johnny football out of this Heisman race just yet either. He could have a big game tomorrow. That might sway some voters to try and pencil him in for a second Heisman. Again, you can see this Nebraska defense selling out to stop the run. As they should. And normally this camera angle, we lose the safeties. The safeties are right there. <laughs> They're right up within seven yards of the line of scrimmage. Weissman gets to the edge. If you sell out to stop the run, oftentimes you'll have free runners. And Andrew Green was just that to bring down Weissman for a loss of a couple. So it's conservative play calling with C.J. Beathard at quarterback and Jake Rudock on the bench yeah, in a two-score well, lead. It makes sense. You know, 7.40 on the clock. You can burn some time. How many possessions will Nebraska get now? You think maybe two, maybe three. You've got a two-possession lead. You burn this clock. You don't care if they play 10 in the box right now. You care about the clock. Beathard snaps it with four on the play clock, hands it to Weissman. 
and the ball may have popped out. Well, there was a reaction from the players as if that ball was loose for a moment, but Weissman comes out with the football, and Nebraska's defense does exactly what they needed to do. They get a yeah. three and out to minimize time off the clock. Yeah, and actually, Iowa did what they wanted to do. They burned some clock. They didn't put their quarterback in a tough position, didn't ask him to throw it, avoided a turnover. They have an opportunity to let their defense continue to make plays and put the pressure on Nebraska to come up with the big play. Hornbrath will kick it to Westerkamp into the wind. And it's been a breeze that has affected the ball slightly. And this will wobbly kick. This will bounce. And that's just the hop that Nebraska was hoping for when they punted it away. That Iowa gets all the way down to the 23-yard line, goes for 42 yards. As we go back to John Saunders. Well, Bob and Rodney, we know coming up at 3.30 Eastern time, we go to Pittsburgh, where it's extremely cold. The Miami Hurricanes coming to town, and apparently no one has told them that it's chilly out there. They're all Mark May. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, tell man. me those guys from South Beach oh. aren't tough. Oh, to it's a swing young. pass to Abdullah. Smart play, steps out of bounds and preserves a bit of time as he picks up four yards on first down. And still plenty of time with three timeouts and six and a half minutes to go for Nebraska to get his possessions. But now they need to be perfect. You need some chunks, though. You, you got to have big plays. You can't do this even hurrying up with three, four, five yards a pop. Kenny Bell, widest to the near side left. He's been quiet today. Kellogg instead swings it to Amani Cross. And that is not a chunk play. No game on second down. It will be third down in about six. Yeah, and that's the challenge. You know that Iowa is going to give you that, that, that little throw, that pass in the flat. But you need chunks. A rollout for Kellogg. Bullets one knocked away intended for Sam Birch. Really good play by Lowry. Now you're in a position where you probably have to go for it. 5.43 to go, and it looks as if Bo Pelini is going to leave his offense on the field. Well, you don't have enough time. You're, you're losing possessions as you see Lowry come in out of nowhere to make that play. You have no choice. You just, you won't have enough possessions. You kick this ball away, they burn off two, three minutes off the clock. The last fourth down conversion for Nebraska was a touchdown. This might be more challenging. Blitz coming. Bella can't. The ball pops up into the air. Diving attempt on a possible interception. And it doesn't matter whether he caught it or not. It still goes over to Iowa as James Morris came through untouched. And that's been a huge factor here in the second half. Uh, the blitz, the pressure by the linebackers hasn't been handled. Morris once again involved. Fourth down turnover. Iowa's looking pretty good. Back with our Pacific Life game summary. Second half pressure from the Iowa defense has been a huge factor. And Amir Abdullah has been bottled up at times today by that Iowa defense well, you, as well. Yeah, you see it there. 23 rushes, 85 yards, most of that in the second half. But that defense, the pressure, the takeaways, you know, four turnovers. Two forced fumbles, two picks. And this is the 14th possession of the day for Iowa and the seventh time that they're starting in plus territory. as if Nebraska will call a timeout in a two-possession game. As we take a look at our BCS standings, brought to you by Tostitos. Of course, there's a game that's gotten a wee bit of publicity that will take place tomorrow at 3.30. The Iron Bowl between Alabama and Auburn. Heard Paul Feinbaum and several others saying that they can't remember the Iron Bowl ever having more meaning than the one that's going to be played yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. Well, and keep in mind, too, uh, you know, number one and number four at stake there. But keep in mind, Ohio State cares about that game. I mean, Ohio State's focused on Michigan, but if Alabama were to lose, Ohio State has a chance to move in to that number two spot in the national championship discussion. So it's a huge, huge Saturday when you think about those two games. Well, we always talk about rivalry games, too. You played in one. Stanford and Cal, obviously, is one of the great rivalry games in college football. 
second great weekend. down and long for Iowa. Love rivalry weekend. And off to Weissman, finds room. And gets tripped up. Almost broken for a touchdown as Corey Cooper. Well, this, down at the 20. This game has become a bit of a rivalry since Nebraska has joined the Big Ten. Last couple of years, Nebraska kind of owned these two games with Iowa. It's becoming a pretty good, uh, pretty good series. A must stop for Nebraska if they want to have any chance with five minutes to go. Third down and two. Weissman bottled up, flagged down. And it looks as if he is short of the line to make anyway. Let's check the penalty. Well, the Iowa players are pointing to Nebraska like they've been told. It Personal was... foul. Hands to the face. Defense number seven. That's a killer. Half the distance yeah. to the goal line. Automatic first down. Malik Collins, one of those interior defensive linemen for Nebraska, called for a personal foul. Well, and it's really too bad. This defense played well most of the game. The short field really hurt them. And then to have a penalty, you know, now in a situation where you, you, you have one final chance. And you can't pull it off because of the penalty. It's too bad. Weissman looking for room. Down to about the eight yard line. Well, this might also breathe some life into this rivalry going forward as well. You know, Kirk Ferentz, when we talked to him earlier this week, said that Tom Osborne, about two and a half years ago, when this was proposed as the yearly rivalry game between these two schools every year, said he said it very respectfully, but said it's a rivalry if both teams are engaged. Yep. So Kirk Ferentz said, we're 0-2, and we really haven't been competitive until we go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this team and start winning some of these games, then it will be a legitimate rivalry. Well, they have done that and then some today. They stake their claim to it now. Weissman inside the five-yard line. And a timeout called by Nebraska. We detailed all of those plus territory possessions for Iowa. That's the type of opportunities you get when you well, get takeaways and mistakes on special yeah, teams. Yeah, they, they dug a hole early, you know, with the pick, a couple picks early on. Wester Camp, trouble with the punts, couldn't handle them, they were backed up. And then the fourth down fake punt didn't help them out, it was essentially a turnover. And then how about Bellini getting a 15-yard penalty that set up a field goal because he was upset with what he thought was a bad call on a pass interference situation. And that that makes you wonder, what, what's the future for Bo Pelini, you know, here at Nebraska? There's, there's been talk, we talked about it earlier, that he's on the hot seat, but given his buyout and a new athletic director, you don't really know. Big leg for Beathard. Touchdown. A little salt in the wounds for most of the 91,000 here, but there's about 1,000, as you can see, up there in black and gold in that far corner. They couldn't be further away from where that last play was run. Yeah, how, how excited do you think Beth is? And that, that's a nice deal for him to come in after Rudolph gets hurt, and he finishes it off with a, uh, a nice little bootleg. Power running inside, got them all focused on that, and, and Beathard got his way to get to the outside. You can't blame Nebraska for being focused on trying to stop the power run inside. And as soon as they think about it, there's Beathard into the end zone. Not the black shirt defense of old, which has been one of the criticisms, you know, of um, Pelini, is that they've struggled defensively and he was hired as a former defensive coordinator to bring back that tradition of great defense. Well, you mentioned the tradition. That's the thing that you're fighting against 
or at maybe embracing when you take the head coaching job here at Nebraska. 43 conference championships. You've got two legendary head coaches that both won multiple national championships. This is a fan base that is used to seeing a decade to a decade and a half go by with a conference championship on about an every other year basis. Now they've had about a decade and a half go by without any conference titles. Well, remember, they fired Frank Sulwich after a nine-win season as well, and, and, and Frank Sulwich has gone on to do well at Ohio. Um, you're right. The expectations here are really high, and I don't know that it's unreasonable for fans to believe, like, at some time in 15 years or so, you ought to win a conference title. I get that. But by the same token, you look at what's happened to this team this year and all the injuries they had, it's, it's really hard to hold these folks responsible for the kind of injuries that they've had. And we'll talk more about that after we check in with John Saunders again. John? Bob and Rodney, we want to remind everybody, coming up at the bottom of the hour, we will move to Pitt against Miami. Matchup in the ACC. Seems worse to say that, but that's what it is. Tom Savage, 19 touchdown passes coming into this game. It's coming up later. All right, John, we're about three and a half minutes away from Iowa. Getting a win here in Lincoln. And getting to one and two, at least in the three games that these two teams have played as conference opponents. Kellogg low throw over the middle, but you talked about the expectations, how fair or unfair they might be. And we asked for a statement from the athletic administration about whether or not the rumors around Bo Pelini are something they're, go they're going to address, and they said that they don't address any of those issues in season. They wait for the season to be over, and then they'll talk about the status of coaches. Swing pass to Amani Cross. Close to the 30-yard line before he goes out. A big hit, Anthony Hitchens is hurt. Well, I, I think the huge factor when you look at Pelini, there's Hitchens. Hopefully that's nothing, nothing serious with him. Hitchens had a pick early in this game. He's had a tremendous game, part of a great linebacking crew here at Iowa. Well, the Iowa sideline reacted to the hit on Hitchens. And we'll take another look. And it's that blindside hit there. Yeah. That ends up drawing the ire of some of the sideline from Iowa, Brandon Riley, redshirt freshman wide receiver. That didn't look quite as flagrant as the Iowa sideline's reaction yeah, made it well, seem it might be. A, a lot of a lot of folks react because they want to see the offensive guys get called for targeting, for defenseless players being hit. But you have to remember, when a guy is hit from the shoulder, that's not going to be called. That's not a target. It's going to be allowed to be as kind of a crack, crack back block. But when you hit guys, you know, front, above the numbers, you'll get it. But that hit from the side at the shoulder is not going to be called as any kind of a targeting call. So Hitchens helped up slowly to the sideline. Hopefully he's okay. And now back to Pelini. I think a lot of fans and a lot of folks who talk about the Nebraska situation are frustrated with the way he's handled some things publicly. The Tommy Frazier situation, you take a, a great player at Nebraska and he's frustrated and then Bo Pelini spoke out about him and basically said, hey, you know, if he doesn't support the program, we don't need him. You, you can't do that with one of your all-time greats. Kenny Bell trying to get behind the defense. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down and nine for Nebraska. And obviously there was the tape that was released of Pelini criticizing Nebraska fans. I'll just say this personally. I've interviewed a lot of coaches. I have been with a lot of coaches in off-the-record situations. Sure. That's an off-the-record situation. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, he, in a moment of frustration, said something that maybe he Agreed. shouldn't have said. But there's no way Agreed. that you should be, as a coach, concerned that that's a tape that ultimately is going to be hurt. Heard. Agreed. That's just a, that's just a coach Agreed. being frustrated. Yeah, absolutely. And that wasn't fair to Bo Pelini, no, no, in no, my no, opinion. No. But the bottom line is that it's $7.65 million to let him go and to pay for a new staff 
and to probably pay off the whole the old staff and you're a first year athletic director and you want to incur that kind of financial liability i don't think that's going to happen College football presented by K Jewelers, part of the rivalry series presented by GoPro continues tomorrow on ABC. Once again, they'll tee it up in the game, this time at the Big House. Number three, Ohio State, hoping for something to go their way, either between Alabama and Auburn in the Iron Bowl or Florida and Florida State. It's the Buckeyes and Braxton Miller taking on Michigan tomorrow at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on ABC. Third string quarterback in the game now, handing it off for Iowa, Cody Sokol. Well, let's not forget what was at stake for both these teams in this ball game. They were both pointed towards a January 1 bowl game, and that's what they were battling uh, for today, and Iowa remains in consideration for that with, with a win today. And you start to think about the teams that Iowa has lost to. They're about to get to eight and four. They've got four losses to teams that come into this weekend, all ranked in the top 15 of the BCS. A combined record of 42 and three, the teams they've lost to. So you can make an argument they're an undervalued team. As Adam Cox goes up the middle. But you lose to Northern Illinois by three. Michigan State by eight. Ohio State by 10. And the one lopsided game, Wisconsin, they lose by 19. But Wisconsin scored two touchdowns in the fourth quarter to take a relatively close game and make it look maybe even more lopsided than it was. Yeah, it's interesting because earlier in the season, people were kind of, you know, poo-pooing that situation, those losses, saying, oh, it's the Big Ten. But as Wisconsin and Ohio State uh, have risen in the polls, mostly Wisconsin, those losses look even more impressive, as has the uh, Northern Illinois loss. So the Hawkeyes can take the clock down well inside of a minute to go. They'll punt it one last time to Nebraska. And Kirk Ferentz is a coach that has been lauded as an NFL prospect, the next hot name through his first several years at Iowa to going through a bit of a trough, to being on the hot seat, like Bo Pelini might find himself right now, to now this season coming off of a four-win year last year to winning twice as many games this season, and they have a chance to play in a pretty high-level bowl game. Well, you know, he, he said they got what they earned this year. You know, he's not complaining about the four losses. He said, we got beat by better teams. Time we out. beat the teams Iowa. that Iowa. we They're probably should have beaten. So he's line. very comfortable with the kind of season his team has had. Kirk Ferentz in his 15th year. It's hard to believe he has been at Iowa that long, but you go all the way back to December of 1998 when he took over the Hawkeye program. And he was named the Big Ten Coach of the Year three times, won the Big Ten in 2002 and through 2004. And those were the days where everyone was wondering how long Kirk Ferentz could be held onto yeah, well, by the Hawkeyes because he was going to be the next coach of the 49ers. He was going to be the next coach of the Rams. And he was mentioned for every job basically from the, the Mississippi West. Yeah, he's not going anywhere. He's got a good situation. He's making a lot of money at Iowa. I think he likes it there. He's a lifer in my view. There is something to be said. You know, it's funny, I was talking to a head coach one time about the idea of having a lot of pro interest but staying in college. And the quote that the coach said to me was, there's something to be said for don't mess with happy. <laughs> happy, if, happy is good. Happy is good. <laughs> if you've got a good situation, your family likes it where you are, Iowa City's a great place and a great collegiate atmosphere for a family to be raised in. Don't mess with Happy. Monty Cross loses a yard and most likely no need for another play to be run. That's a terrific win for the Hawkeyes on the road to come to Nebraska. And they have a chance to run across and find the Heroes Trophy. And celebrate a win in what might be a burgeoning rivalry in the Big Ten. I love that scene. That's always fun. When there's a trophy at stake, Guys get pretty excited about it. That's pretty cool. Let's go down to Quinn Kesnick. 
Coach, congratulations. Thanks, what man. what was the, the factor in this game that made the biggest difference? Yeah, it was just it was a hard game all the way through, and our, our guys battled. Their guys battled. It was just a, a really good football game. How do you best describe the play of your senior linebackers? Well, they've been outstanding all season long. Not not only on the field, their leadership. Uh, it's just been invaluable. It's a big reason why we're uh, you know we turned things around a little bit. Yeah. What's it like to go from four four and eight last year to eight and four this year? Well, we don't want to try it again if that's okay. We did that you know 99 2000. Hopefully we're off that uh, elevator, but. Yeah, the credit goes to our players. They've worked extremely hard since the end of last November, uh, and it all starts with the older guys. They give us great leadership, you know, and that's uh, today was a byproduct of all that. As they grab that Heroes Trophy, can we now call this a rivalry? Well, it's a start. It's a start. I'll leave it right there. Congratulations, Thanks, Coach. Mark. Great Thank job. You. Well, the Heroes Trophy, at least for this year, won for the first time by Iowa, as they have a chance to carry the silver football off the field. 38-17 is our final. Iowa takes out Nebraska. Coming up next here on ABC, it's college football presented by K Jewelers. It's the Miami Hurricanes heading to Heinz Field to take on the Pittsburgh Panthers. For Quint Kesnick and Rod Gilmore, our entire crew have a happy Thanksgiving weekend. So long from Lincoln.